right. Well, hello and welcome, you guys. Welcome and hello. Today is Thursday, which can really only mean one thing. That's right. It's vlog day. It's been vlog day on Thursday since 2013. I don't think we're slowing down anytime soon, but thank you guys. Seriously, so much for coming out. Favorite day of the week. Let me do a real quick rundown for you. And for anybody watching on the replay, all the timestamps for this whole stream are going to be that first pinned comment right underneath the video. I also turned those into chapters, so we should be good to go. But uh, let me do a real quick rundown for you. We're doing tonight's vlog. Uh, a little bit different. Here we go, Rick Martin. We're doing tonight's vlog just a little bit different. I decided... Uh, I have not done any sort of like ask me anything in years. It's been literal years. Way back in 2014 and 2015, I did two AMAs on the ECR subreddit, on the electronic cigarette subreddit there. I had done like maybe one or two AMAs on like the Culture of Clouds podcast, but even that was just like a few email questions here and there. And I haven't ever done a live AMA. So that's what we're here to do tonight. So we're going to have a little bit of like a condensed vlog, and then we're going to spend a lot of time on the AMA. So like I said, it'll make more sense after I get this rundown for you guys here, Jim. Um, beer, of course, we're going to crack a beer. We're going to talk about what I've been vaping. Why is this light blue and why is it pointing at me? Of course, we got beer and of course, we got what I've been vaping. Uh, I'm going to sprinkle in some news as well in there. We have uh, mail. I have a bunch of mail that we're going to get through before we get to any sort of uh, AMA questions. So hold your questions till we get to the AMA segment. Cool? Cool, you guys. And I think that's what... Uh, I think that's what we're doing tonight. In fact, let's start this vlog right now by doing my, that one thing that is my my new favorite thing where I get to hear from one of my subscribers. And it's, in this case, it's not so much hear from one of my subscribers as it is like, you know, go through this little exercise with one of my subscribers. Right now, we're going to hear from Liam. And Liam's that one thing is interactive. So we're all going to have, uh, at least I am, I'm going to join, I'm going to join Liam. We're going to hydrate real quick right here at the top of the vlog. We're going to have a little hydrate and vape break uh, with Liam. Take it, take it away, Liam. That was excellent, Liam. Awesome. Thank you for that. In fact, we'll we'll revisit Liam a few times throughout the vlog. I like the hydro break, have a little bit of like a hydro vape break a few times throughout the vlog. Don't worry. We'll be we'll be hearing from we'll be seeing Liam again. We won't be uh hearing from him except his sick water chugging skills. Anyway, if anybody else out there has a video similar to that, doesn't have to be that exact same thing. It can be I've said this in the past, can be literally anything. Send your videos to me, nick at grimgreen.com. I love seeing them and we use them in this vlog all the freaking time. Nick at grimgreen.com, just mark your subject. You know what I always say, that one thing, just mark your subject, that one thing. Chances are I'll see it and uh, the such as. So cool. How you guys doing? What else do you want to do tonight? Oh, that's right. I have a whole plan. Let's, uh, let's... <laughs> I don't know if there were any super chats that came out. I didn't see anything yet. I think there was one super chat. Is that from New Wave, Dave? Let's do one super chat. Okay, that's fine. Uh, he says, I like Casey and the Sunshine Band, especially that song that goes, do a little dance, give Nick five bucks, get down tonight. I love that song. I didn't know... New Wave Dave, I didn't know that those were the lyrics to the song. I'm going to have to re-listen to that. Do a little dance. <laughs> Give Nick five bucks. Get down tonight. Ha! Get down tonight. Ha! Let's have a beer, you guys. Uh, I've been talking already way too much, and uh, it's time to have a beer. I have a beer in front of me. This came from... Uh, oh, hang on. I'll just save it till after the excessively long and loud beer bumper. Yeah! Mm. 
There you go. Sorry about that, Jason Campbell. I hope you're enjoying your uh, coffee there. But I have a this to enjoy from Outer Light Brewing Company. H how great does this sound? Peanut butter pitch and roll. Imperial stout with peanut butter and chocolate added. Oh, peanut butter pitch and roll. Are you kidding me? So this, oh no, Dancy. Dancy. Not Dancy. Dan C. Dan C. sent this to me. We're going to be pouring this tonight into a uh, Revolver Brewing Company Death Ray IPA glass. This is actually one of my favorite glasses, and I felt like it was lost. I thought it was lost. I couldn't find it, couldn't find it, couldn't find it. It turns out I was just doing uh, what my wife affectionately refers to as a Nick look. And that's where, you know, it's like uh, you open the fridge and you just go, I'm not finding what I want. And then you close it and you go, Pickle, where's the thing? And she's like, it's in the fridge. I'm like, no, I looked. <laughs> I looked. Nah, I didn't look hard enough because then I found my Death Ray IPA glass. So we're going to pour this. Yeah, yeah, it's dark. It's dark. It's like space without the stars. It's like space without the stars, isn't it? It's my spinal tap impression. Yeah, drink through that head like a man. Anyway, this is uh, this looks delicious. I, I come on, peanut butter, peanut butter imperial stout with peanut butter and chocolate added. Dave Lloyd, how do you not want that? Cheers, you guys. Hope you got something next to you. Okay, that's just crazy. That is just that is ridiculous. For an imperial stout, I was expecting a little bit more like of a syrupy, syrupy mouthfeel. It's not. It's it's a little bit light and crispy, a little bit refreshing. It does have some like of those heavy, like stouty notes to it right out of the gate. It's just peanut butter, like peanut butter into your face, more peanut butter than what's the other name of that beer? Belching Beaver Peanut Butter Milk Stout. That is like peanut butter just kicked to the face. This is like this is worse than a kick to the face. This is like a double peanut butter kick to the face. I don't get a whole lot of chocolate. At least I didn't on my one singular sip. Keep in mind, all of this judgment is coming from one singular sip so far. Yeah, it's not very uh, uh, effervescent. As you can see, the head is kind of just completely disappeared. Let's get the rest of this out here. Oh, yeah. Peanut butter. You get intense peanut butter right out of the gate, and it's not like a sweet peanut butter. It's like a, uh, I don't know, you know the dumb peanut butter that people buy? Or, I don't know, I don't want to call people dumb. You know the dumb peanut butter that people buy that I buy that has like, it's natural, and you have to like stir the hell out of it, and there's oil on top, and then you make a sandwich out of it, and you're like, this isn't very good. I don't know why I buy this peanut butter. That's the peanut butter that it tastes like. Not in that negative of a way. It's just a very natural, I wouldn't even call it peanut butter. It's more of like a peanut, peanuts. It's just like, it's like peanuts. And then there's some like uh, some light chocolate sort of uh, on the finish of it. It's tasty as all hell. I mean, it is, it is delicious and it's a pretty cohesive flavor. I get... All the, all the components, like kind of up front on the tongue, it's like it's like that rich stoutiness, maltiness, peanut buttery, chocolatey, very cohesive. Damn. Delicious. I hope that some of you have a beer that is at least as delicious as this tonight. Dang and a half. Now, I don't know what I can pair it with. Uh, probably nothing. Probably, uh, here, custard. Custard. We got some overdrip custard. I mean, yeah, of course that's delicious. Custards and tobaccos pair really well just in general, in my opinion, with uh, with a good beer, like a good stouty sort of uh, stouty sort of beer. What is in here? I think this is uh, the Turkish traditions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Turkish traditions, very much the same, like, creamy, butterscotchy, sort of custardy tobacco. Yes, 
Man, that's good. And I'm really stoked on this beer. All right, well, now I have a beer to enjoy for the rest of the vlog. I did see some super chats come in. I apologize. Yeah, I don't mean to offend anybody. I just occasionally throw a Scottish accent out there sometimes. And it's only from watching other vape reviewers. Like it's from watching, <laughs> you know, it's from hearing all of these other accents all over the world. Just be thankful I don't try my Australian accent. I'm not going to try to sound like Breeze Tones anytime soon or Bogan anytime soon. Actually, I'm just kidding. That's going to happen right now. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Real quickly, I wanted to do, uh, before we get to the Super Chats, I've kind of whittled down what I've been vaping. So let me show you real quick what I've been vaping. Now, these three things fall into the uh, it's been getting some use category, right? It's been getting some use. It's not, I don't carry it with me throughout the house. I don't take it with me to bed and set it on my nightstand. These are just uh, burp life, uh, double burp life. Triple burp life. These are things that have been getting some use. So it's the Addy Tooney K Fun. This sits on my desk. I love puffing on it. It's 12 milligram. It's an Addy Tooney K Fun. And it's just kind of become my desky mouth to lung kind of guy. The Luna Squonk with the Daywan. This is a holdover from the last build stream. And I've been enjoying squonking again. I need to track down if anybody can tell me, please, where I can get new non-silicone squonk bottles or silicone squonk bottles that don't taste like silicone because I can taste it. I love this setup and I've been using it. Overdrips Custard is in here, but I can taste the bottles. I can taste the bottle. It's like a Play-Doh type of flavor. It's really, really bizarre. And then lastly, getting some use. It's Jake Scrapwood with a Fatality M25 on top. Super good 10, I think is in here. Yeah. The apricot jam, uh, that's delicious. Now, for review, I have some things on my desk from Geek Vape. I think uh, Mike's already done his videos, but this is the AGS Legend 2. Comes with a sub tank. I think it's pretty slick. I'm going to spend a few more days with it, maybe another week or so with it before I do a full review. This is the Obelisk AIO. I've been trying this out. It's got kind of hologram right there. It's honestly kind of cool. Custard in this one uh, as well, as you heard, as you saw. So those are kind of up for review. Now, as far as what I've actually, actually been using, oh baby, Golden Boy is back in rotation. You know, I haven't seen Potato, Disco Potato in quite a while. If anybody sees her, you tell her that Grim Green misses her and that uh, this is Golden Boy with the wicked uh, bridged 1.5 in there, some random ass drip tip I saw, Own Boy Mango on the inside. I decided it had been way too long since I have rocked a billet box and <sighs> there's just nothing like it. It's so great. Yeah, own boy mangoes on the inside of that. I got another mango, McMangoes Mayhem from Hogat's on the Mother Truck and Snowcap mech with the Asgard Mini. This, just one of my favorite things. Just one of my damn favorite things. I love this RDA. I love this mech. I love Snowcap mods. I love, I love Hogat. I love McMangoes Mayhem. It's just delicious. And then lastly, a holdover from the Monday build stream. It's at Mike Vapes. Clutch mech mod with, yeah, Dimlit Knight. You recognize that? That's that Widowmaker RTA from Vandy Vape. I kind of had no idea this thing existed, and uh, we did it on a build stream, and, and now I love it. And now it's spectacular. Uh, Banana Beauty whatever from Baked is on the inside. There's some light crackling happening, not like a deep crackle like I like, but there's some nice, nice light crackling happening. The flavor on this is really good. The airflow on this is really good. I don't know. I don't know why anybody didn't tell me about the Widowmaker RTA. You know, I rely on you guys all the time. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm, I'm really overjoyed that I finally got to uh, try this and it's just been a really, uh, really great vape. Oh, Cool, Michelle Lynn. Cool. Sorry, I just want to vape it. It's been so good. And then uh, Soren Pro thing, doing a review for this. It's that Artemis, you guys. The Artemis mouth to lung with this build in it. This is from the Monday build stream, and this is the build that I did for it and just left it in there and wicked it. And I've been vaping it ever since. I filled this tank up like three times since Monday, and it's still vaping like a champion. Flavors on point. That's delicious. 
And I just, that goes to prove you can build like crap. You can build garbage round wire builds. And as long as there's no hot spots in it, vape it. <laughs> vape it. And then uh, Whirl S. The Whirl S and that new fucking stupid you well yearn to amazing this is an this is an incredibly awesomely cheap pod it's like 16 bucks and it's one of the best pods i've ever used i just did a, a video for it highly suggest checking it out if you want to pause but that's it that's that's what i've been vaping i've, I've broke i broke everything down one day i did an instagram reel of it i broke it all down to the point that i had literally nothing except pod systems sitting around to vape on and it was really nice like getting rid of everything and then just starting from scratch that's really fun to me. I don't know. Maybe that's like a, a great build, right, Glenn? Maybe that's just like a, a me thing or like a reviewer thing, which I hate to say, but I generally have a lot of setups going and it's really fun to just tear everything down to nothing. And there's that moment where you're like, I literally, if I wanted to vape right now, I couldn't. I have nothing set up. That's a good feeling, you know? And then you build that one first setup and it's like, for me, it's always a mech RDA because I just like to vape like that. Anyway, I've been going, I've been going through this uh, re-love affair with setting stuff up again. <laughs> Which is not good. That's not a good, this is not, this is not exactly where I want to be. Anyway, that's, uh, that's kind of more or less what I've been vaping. Uh, I did see some super chats come in, so we're going to do some super chats. That's it. That's literally all you get of the bumper. It's just like one, one tiny dinky little thing. Matt Sinister, drop and give me 10. Here's the thing. Matt, Matt Sinister, yo yo to one of my patrons, Matt Sinister. He's, he's doing this whole like journey to get my health back. Matt Sinister, Matt Sinister, the pro wrestler, Matt Sinister, by the way. I'm, you know, I'm just saying. And uh, I've been following him on Instagram and him, him in the gym. And so I, I made this deal where like every time his stuff comes across my newsfeed, I have to do 10 push-ups. I've done 30 push-ups today already, Matt Sinister. I'm going to drop and give you 10 more on camera right over here because this is about, you know, vaping is about getting getting healthy. You know, it's harm reduction. It's like, as soon as I stopped smoking and started vaping, it's like, okay, well maybe now I'll eat a little bit better. Maybe now I'll do some fucking pushups. I want to empower us to do that. And I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. I'm going to do 10 pushups for Matt Sinister. Don't say I never gave you nothing. Can you see me over here? Is this okay? Can you see me still? I don't know if you can see me. Oh, hang on. Count off. One, two, three, four, five. That's fine. That's easy. Seven, eight, nine. Oh, you did the last one real slow. Ten. Fuck yeah. Ten push ups, Matt Sinister. Woo! That broke a sweat. That broke a sweat. Rhett Falls is asking, why is cheese so good? Um, you know, there's a lot of ways to answer this question. You can say cheese is so good because it's just the flavor. It's, it's, it's just the flavor of cheese is so good and it's so versatile. You can just eat it, right? You can just grab a block of cheese the size of a car battery and just bite into it and just eat it. And you go, fuck yeah, cheese. You can melt it. You can season with it. You can melt it again. Nachos. I mean, everything is made better with cheese, Rhett Falls. And I, I, that's just something I believe in. That's just the way I was raised. <laughs> Jeez, guy. I need to hydrate now. Just, uh, Justin Johnson, that's very gracious of you. Thank you for everything you do. I've been watching you and tobacco-free since 2012. Keep it up. And sorry it's taken me till now to support. P.S. I love the Christian metal. Justin Never worry, you, you you watching my videos and you quitting smoking with vaping and being tobacco free since 2012, bro. That's all I need. <laughs> that's all I need. That's literally all the support I need, bro. Thads today. First time catching you live. I always watch your replays and build and wick my devices. Vape on. I love that. Thads today. I like that that you have like a a ceremony like you rebuilding stuff with the vlog on 
I love that. I'm just happy to be a little piece of background furniture in your building session. Ah, <sighs> man, those 10 push-ups, man, that really took it out of me, Matt Sinister. You son of a bitch. And all I've had is like beer tonight, pushing the water away. Let's have some more beer. Beer makes push-ups easier to do, right? That's, I mean, that's what I've heard. I think that science has said that too. I'm not sure. I'm sure I could use some uh, weasel words and say there's new studies that show this. Um, uh, Josh says, uh, hey, Grim, if I become a Kate patron, uh, what are some of the benefits I can get? I love the show. I honestly wouldn't mind helping for your efforts. I don't want to turn this into <laughs> it's a Patreon. It's a Patreon. It's a Patreon sales pitch. Um, listen, here's the thing. If you sign up for my Patreon as a $1 patron, here's what you get. The satisfaction of helping me and access to a podcast that my wife and I do just for the patrons. I think we just did episode 30 something. <clears throat> If you sign up on my Patreon for a $5 spot, you get an even greater satisfaction of knowing that you're helping me. And you also get access to anything I post on my Patreon feed as well as uh, the podcast that I do with my wife just for the patrons. I think we're on episode 30 something. Okay. If you're in the 10 or $20 spots, see, this is where things get crazy. You get access to a secret Instagram account that I stream on every Monday and every Wednesday with my patrons. You get access to the Grim Army Discord where, you know, we have a mountain of different chat rooms and there's like a wrestling room and a nerdy stuff room and hand checks and trades and whatever. And then on Thursday nights after the vlog, we, all, we, we hang out, me and the 10 and $20 patrons, we just get in a Zoom room and it's whatever. We listen to music, we goof off, we drink beer, we make jokes, uh, you know, we, we, cr we crack on Lee, we crack on uh, Matt Sinister a little bit sometimes, but it's, it's all really good fun, really awesome group of people that I genuinely look forward to. So that's my big Patreon sales pitch. I'll additionally, you don't need to sign up for my Patreon because everything I do on YouTube and across the internet is still free for you to, you know, I don't want any... Patreon pressure. Don't feel like in order to be a real fan of something or like a real, you know, a real vapor that you need to join the Grim Army Patreon. You do not. You being here right now is, is, is literally all the support I could possibly ask for. Anyway, that's <laughs> there's my Patreon sales pitch. Um, so that's the, there's the pitch, Josh. Uh, let's see, Dan, how are you doing, Dan? Glad you enjoyed the brew. Already had two. yo yo from CT. Okay, this is Dan C. This is Dan C with the peanut butter bee. Barbara Burgess, shout out cream cheese. Shout out cream cheese and two of her boys, Thistle and Thor, uh, got left with me one year ago today. I have eight cats and a dog. Yep, crazy cat mom. Love ya, Barbara there, I don't believe in a crazy cat person at all. I think that's a, a stupid stigma thing. I think you just have a lot of love in your heart and, and you get to give this love to your eight cats and a dog. If one of your cats isn't named Little Grim, like Barbara, come on, what do you, like we're family, you know? <laughs> I'm just kidding, Barbara. Shane, that's very gracious of you. I really appreciate that, bro. You didn't say anything, you didn't have to. Gabe Claus says, I think I already saw this vlog earlier today. No, Gabe, that was just you hitting that old, uh, you know, Christmas cheer, right? Some of that mistletoe, right, Gabe? Rising Phoenix, because it's been so long, bro. Much love from San Antonio, Texas. Damn it, Rising Phoenix Vapory. I appreciate you, man. Uh, Seamus sent a video in, in your shop, but uh, the audio on it is so bad, I, I can't use it. Uh, so get another someone else to shoot another video of your shop, Mr. Rising Phoenix Vapory. I'd like to hear from you again. Uh, and lastly, we got Rhett Falls here. Have you ever looked at the back of a $20 bill on cheese? Uh, yeah. Uh, hi, Rhett. I'm a red-blooded American. Of course, I've looked at the back of a $20 bill on cheese. I've done lots of things on cheese. Okay, we got one more from Taylor, and then we got to move on. Much love, Mr. Grim Green, uh, from this random fella in Wisco. Is that Wisconsin? Is this? Are you from the land of cheese? Taylor, you're kind of going to be a little bit of a celebrity here if you're from Wisconsin. Hope you have the most excellent of vlog times. I will, Tyler, my man. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Let's move forward uh, a little bit from there. You guys want to open this mail? We're doing the whole, whole vlogs out of order tonight. 
I would like to uh, I would like to get through some mail. We're gonna do a real condensed news and advocacy, and then we can get to whatever. We can just hang out. And if you guys don't even want to ask me anything, look, you don't have to. It's no pressure there. Uh, but I'm on board. Let's do some mail. So I have a, a bunch of mail again, and I didn't. I don't know. I never expect mail. If I have mail, then I go, cool. Then I got some mail to open up. And sometimes it's a flood and sometimes, you know, it's, it's a drought. Tonight, it's a little bit of a flood. There's something here. I know there's a package here from Canada. Yeah, I know there's a package here from the United Kingdom. Yeah. So we're just going to uh, straight up dig into these. You want to take a little hydro homie break real quick with Liam again? Let's hydrate real quick, you guys. good Liam that's good that helps me out like crazy all right now this package says USPS but oh this came from uh Chicago there's no name on this there's no name on this I apologize there's no name on this Chicago Chicago, who, who's, who's, who's Chicago? Chicago represent, where are you at? Chicago, what'd you send, what are you sending over here, Chicago? What is this? What is this? What is this? Why do I have large, what? What is this? What is this? I've never been more confused in my life. Okay, oh, okay, so these are, oh, okay, these are hoodies. Yes, I get it. Okay, these, I recognize the logo on the back. This is a clothing company that hit me up that makes hoodies. And, uh, you know, apparel and the such as. Apparel and the such as. Where was the one? Okay, so there's some pink ones. Look, cool. I, I'll rock a pink hoodie. I don't care. Maybe not. But let's, there was one design that I saw that I was like, oh, that's pretty fucking cool. Yeah, this one. I think that's kind of sick. It's there. It's the logo. And then it's got, like, space on the sleeves. That's kick ass. I don't know. I don't remember the name of this company, damn it. Why didn't you? There's a website. They, they, they have a website, and I want to make sure that I give them proper credit because they sent me hoodies, and there's no tags or anything. It's just a mystery bag with mystery box with mystery merch that doesn't have the name of the company anywhere on it. I mean... Right on, like, I appreciate you keeping it, you know, the branding to a minimum, but damn it, I need to give you proper credit. If you're here tonight and you're like, hey, I'm the one that I make these hoodies, uh, let me know so I can give you uh, proper credit. He has some cool designs too. I wonder if I still have the tab open. I had the tab open to his store. Ah, oh, shit. No, I definitely don't anymore. Mother Trucker. Uh, no, that's not it. Damn it. I apologize. I, I kind of, ju I just like this. Uh, I just like this design. He had a few with like uh, UFOs and stuff on them and like some other galaxy prints. Like, I don't know. I'm s obsessed with space. So I, it's like, it's cool on the nebula arms. I think that's cool. I think that's cool as hell. Shit. I might give, give some of these hoodies away. I'll rock a pink hoodie. Don't even trip. If it wasn't like, seriously, if it wasn't 800 degrees in here right now and I haven't even got to the news yet, I can't wear a hoodie in here. But damn it, I need that web page. I will do my freaking best. Google a picture of the logo. I know. I'm going to try, I'm going to do my best to get a link in the description to where these hoodies came from. I, I have to. 
Look inside on the left of the hoodie. Look inside to the left of the hoodie. Uh, there's a L. It says large. That's it. Look inside to the left of the hoodie. Nope. Coming up with nothing. That's the logo, though. Coming up with nothing for name, Brandon. Coming up with nothing for name, Brandon. I'm here. Rough McGruff's here? Okay. 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 This is a package from Amazon that I do not believe that I ordered. So we're, I'm hoping that, s that there's a note on the inside. And, you know, it's fun. It's like uh, I kind of feel like this might be a... Uh, what? Who is this from? What the hell? Who is this from? Don't forget Nico. Josh, Vaping Jedi. Josh, happy belated birthday gift from Josh, the Vaping Jedi. Where are you at? Take credit for this. Thank you, Josh. Holy shit. Oh, what the hell? Wait, you got me Girl Scout cookies? You got me Caramel Delights and Thin Mint Girl Scout cookies? Josh, <laughs> you jerk. Thank you. That's incredible. Uh, okay, we have a Nico toy for sure. Lamb Chop. Okay, yeah, Lamb Chop toy. Oh, she'll go great. She'll go crazy for this. She, yeah, she's going to go crazy for this, Josh. Going to go crazy for this. And then we got, oh, fucking calligraphy stuff. Whoa, bro. You don't have to get me all this. Brush pens. I'm trying, I'm starting off, uh, you know, doing some calligraphy and, and the such as. Oh, and then I have an imperial banner. Oh, 30 by 50. Whoa, you want me to hang this off my roof? Fucking A. I, I need more stuff for the office. Like I need another hole in the head, but thank you. Thank you, Josh. You, you. You guy, you Josh guy, thank you. That's so fucking nice. You didn't have to. That's cool, man. Thank you, Josh. Thank you. This, oh, Toonie, Toonie, what'd you send me, Toonie? Uh, usually Toonie give me, gives me a, like a little bit of a heads up. Usually Toonie give me a heads up. I got no heads up tonight. Or maybe you did give me a heads up, Toonie, and I'm just like, well, I don't remember. <laughs> There's a very good chance that's also. Uh, hi, Nick. Hi, Pickle. Love you guys. Just for fun, Toonie. What? Oh, it's like a... <laughs> oh, that's great. It is a big, tall, awesomely dorky drip tip and a square... Fucking tugboat cap. But first of all, look at this drip tip. I've been a big fan of like really, really stupid, dorky looking drip tips. Um, there's this dude in the Ukraine, uh, Oleg, who I love. He makes drip tips. Look at this beast. Look, would you just look at that drip tip? See, I rock the weird drip tips on my whirl because I think it makes it more fun. So let's put a weird drip tip on. My yeah, that is whirl prime right there. Yeah, we did communicate in emails, Raymond. All right, I love this drip tip, Toonie. Thank you, bro. Thank you, Toonie. You know, t <sighs> thank you, Toonie. You're just one of the nicest dudes. You're just like, here, just because. Here's a little thingy. Here's a little, here's a little ditty just for you. Just because. <sighs> Jason. Yo, yo, Ruff McGruff. Hang on, Ruff McGruff. What do we have here, Ruff McGruff? I saw you here tonight. I saw you here tonight. Oh. Hang on. Is this something that we talked about that I just don't remember? Oh. Oh, Ruff McGruff. You son of a bitch. <laughs> yes. 
Um, were we trading for this? I think we were trading for this. It's a, it's nothing. It's whatever. It's a black, uh, it's a black mix. It's just a black mix. I, I'm a huge fan of the mix. Uh, Rough McGruff had a black one. I think we were trading something. I, I'll get back to you, Rough McGruff. I'm pretty sure we were uh, trading something for this black mix. Stoked. Stoked, Rough McGruff. I love my mix. I love my mix. And I've always wanted a black one. But wait, there's more. Digital Works? Michael from Digital Works? What do you know about that, Michael from Digital Works? How are you doing? Um, so I'm not 100% sure how we're going to do this AMA. I'm guessing it's going to be with Super Chats, but if you want to try to 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 tag me in the chat, I, I'm going to try to, you know, I'll try to watch it and keep an eye on it. I want to try to, you know, answer people. <laughs> what is happening here? A gift for you. Hey, Nick, I use this set on a daily basis. Super pleased with its fit and finish. Hope you enjoy from Michael Vapors. Michael Vapors, you are way too nice, bro. What is this? Oh, dude. Precision screwdriver set. God, I love tools. I like getting tools. I like using them. <laughs> Precision screwdriver set. So Michael Vapors, I'm assuming that this is your uh, your rebuilding jam. Like this is what you use. If there's another box with another bag on it underneath this, I'm gonna freak out, man. Okay. <laughs> oh, but there's more tags. Jesus, this feels like an Apple product. Oh, look at that. Oh shit, precision screwdrivers. Hell yeah. Okay, thank you, Michael Vapors. That's super awesome. In fact, I'm going to put your name on this. Michael. I'm going to put Mike on here. Mike. I never want to forget who these came from, Mike. Thank you. Precision screwdrivers. Mike, have you been watching the build stream lately on Mondays and you're like, Grim, what are you even doing with those old, gross, like liquid covered tools? <laughs> Like even the screwdriver I use for, th it's like gross. It's cake and juice, just gross. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Michael Vapors. I really appreciate that. Oh my God. I think I know what's in here. Holy shit. I think I know what's in here. I think I know what's in here. Did you see what I got, Dr. Braun Von Braun Vapes? It's a boxer. This is the DNA 100. This is the DNA 100C from Ginger Industries Boxer brand. Uh, there's a long sleeve t-shirt in here of some sort. All right. Boxer? Yeah. Oh, it's a long sleeve uh, thin sort of... Los Angeles springtime hoodie. It's uh, pretty perfect there. Where do where do you get your stuff done, boxer? Where did where did your where does your where do you get your merch done? I'm just curious. Oh do, oh, do you get your merch done at, at Custom Inc? Just, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just giving you a hard time. Sick. Ginger Vapor Premium E Liquids Boxer Brand. This single. 2700 uh, DNA 100 C Serenity now. Let's open this because we're not going to not vape this right now. We're not going to not vape it right now. Okay. So if you have boxer stuff, you know that it comes in the nice uh, little boxer sort of velveteen bag. That's a big old boosh right there. Look at that. Single 21700 DNA 100C. 100C, metallic P. Now, how do I open this? Okay, 
It's just a pull. I wasn't sure. I, I haven't I had a boxer in a really long time. I have not had a boxer in a very long time. I didn't want to you know, break it or anything. All right, 21,700 goes in. All right. Serenity now. Backwards. There it is. That is some nice, snappy ass fit and finish. These are really nice 3D printed mods. Boxer. Wow. Okay, that's a pretty slick screen on there. You guys going to be able to see that screen? It's a little bit too bright, but... That is a really nice screen. User manual and everything. How to use your t-shirt. Pull it over your head, then put your arms through the armholes. I mean, that makes perfect sense to me. All right, boxer. All right, boxer. I got a boxer sticker. Can I put a boxer sticker here? Probably not. But I'm definitely going to keep the packaging because that's nerdy and I need to keep it. All right, boxer. What do we put on top? Let's put something like, hmm, hmm, maybe this, yes, maybe the Widowmaker, yes, all right, here we go, Widowmaker on top of the boxer, number five, let's see, uh, oh, it's going to ask, measure, I love these buttons, I love this screen, this screen is incredible. This screen is beautiful. All right, let's turn you up to uh, maybe 60, 70 watts, yes. Let's try it. Needs more wattage. I need something like, uh, <laughs> you know, with the right resistance on here, a 0 0.08 on a DNA 100 I could max this out and I'm not going to get the wattage that I was getting off of a mech. Pretty close. That's pretty close. Um, the finish of this mod is pretty great. That button is clicky. These menu buttons are clicky and protruding. It feels nice and smooth. It's one of the single most ergonomic things. It's got that teardrop shape, you know? It's got that kind of teardrop shape on the bottom. Palm it. Oh. Type two, type two. That's what's gonna go on here, my black type two. As soon as I re-wick it, black type two is 100% going on that boxer. 800, 900% going on that boxer. And it's even got like a black aluminum 510 connection on there. Can you see that? Boxer mod, ginger vape. I love this. I want to put a... Uh... Okay, it is just a pull. I, I feel like I'm going to break it every single time. I want to put a black 21700 in here so it, you know, matches a little bit better. And you don't see that... Uh... Oops. Okay, maybe that's right. Nope, it's this way. Okay. Whew. Takes a little bit a uh, little bit of getting used to there. Now oh, this battery's dying. So I'm going to charge it. But sick fucking boxer mod. I'm really excited about that. Boxer's been doing some cool stuff and I am uh I'm kind of honored to be able to uh to try their shit. Anyway, last box. This is from the United Kingdom. United Kingdom. Yeah, United Kingdom. Sloan, are you in here? Ad Sloan? Where are you at, Ad Sloan? There's a lot of hype behind this box. Ad Sloan has been like, I'm sending you a box. I'm sending you a box. I was like, okay. Here we go, Ad Sloan. It's happening, bro. I'm just going to cut it open like a, you know, Cut towards yourself. Safety third. All right. We got it open. Uh, goodies from the UK. Hope you enjoy. Grim is a sucker for a clicky button and a crackly vape. Barbara, you know me well. Do not eat all at once. Okay. Uh, first of all, Ad Sloan, last time I checked, I live in America, and it's kind of a free country. Oh, God. There's beer everywhere. 
Hang on, let me get a uh, let me get a towel real quick. Beer explosion. Oh god damn it. Oh god, it's gonna smell like beer in here for a month. It got on my wedding picture. It got on my wedding picture. You know what? That's fine. It's going to smell like peanut butter beer in here for the rest of the year. And I don't even care. Hang on. Let me do a little, uh, a little clean up here. Does anybody want a beer covered Thelema? That looks pretty good, right? <laughs> Add Sloan. Oh God, it's close to my hard drives. I need to stop this and you. All right. Great. Soaked, soaked right into the vape mat. That's that's good. That's my favorite. That's I like this. I'm so happy. <laughs> I'm so happy. Uh, let's put you there, hon. Uh, really, what I'm mostly upset about is this. This all of this beer. I mean, you saw where it was from down to here. Gone. Gone. I'm gonna get a new beer. I'm going to get a new beer. That's unacceptable. And that upsets me that I... <laughs> Do you ever just spear, spill beer all over your desk because of one of your patrons, Ad Sloan? I'm never going to forgive you for this. <laughs> I'm just kidding, dude. I'm just kidding, bud. This was 100% my fault. 2,000% my fault. Look. You know, this is this like we're all surprised. Like this is the first time beer's ever been spilled on this desk. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? There's been there's been more beer spilled on this desk than whoops than 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 uh, than than other than other things. Unacceptable. Let's get another beer. I can't. I'm not gonna do an AMA without a beer to drink. That's goofy. That's goofy. But I, for one, am still excited about Ad Sloan's box. Just a quick note. Thank you for everything you've done for the community. I've been part of the Cool Kids Club for about five months, and they are the greatest group of people. Thank you for bringing us all together. Thank, I, it's my pleasure. I have packed this box full of British stuff. Yes, there are Jamie Dodgers and Jaffa Cakes. There is a Fogger. And there is a... Foiger, me, me fluffy one as well. Ad Sloan. Ah, okay. I'm not reading it in a British accent. That's why I can't. <laughs> I've also put some coils I've made in as well for you to try. I hope you like them. Thanks again, Ad Sloan. Car Cloud Cartel UK. Hope you enjoyed the tape. Yes, Ad Sloan. Loved the tape. Do you ever look at something and you just hear angels singing? He, just singing in my office. I mean, Milky Bars. Oh my God, I love Milky Bars. I love Milky Bars. I love Cadbury. I love Hari. But oh my God, there's Jaffa. What? What is this? What, what even? Oh, this is coils. Okay. Okay. I was like, is this some weird new British candy I've never seen before? No, it's just coils. Okay. Uh, there's crunchies. There are jammy dodgers in here. There's twirls. There's uh, look. There, there's another Nico toy. My dog is the the single most spoiled dog on the planet. Subscribers send her toys to play with. Caitlin sends her toys to play with. Shout out Caitlin in Texas, Mama. She definitely heard that. Oh, and beer. Oh, there's duct tape. Okay, well, add Sloan. I mean, look, I'm not going to... Uh, I can't possibly open every single beer, but that doesn't mean I can't open one. In fact, here, we got a cold one right here. Life and Death IPA from Ad Sloan. Let's open this right now. Actually, you know what? I don't know. Maybe we don't want to open that one right now. Maybe we want to open... Uh, it's either going to be this one or the other one. Oh. Whoa. Shelby... Thornbridge IPA. Is this a is this a British IPA, bro? 
IPA Thornbridge, Brewed Thornbridge, official beer of the TV series Peaky Blinders. Okay. And Jaffa Cakes? Okay. Oh. I don't even, look, like even they're just a little bit smashed. This, the Jaffa Cakes are like, this is what the angels were singing about. If you've never taken a Jaffa Cake and, and, and put it in your mouth and just eaten it, It's like, what are you even doing with your life? Jaffa Cakes are from God himself. Thank you, Ad Sloan. <laughs> this is, this, this fills me with so much joy, bro. You have brought so much joy to my life with uh, British junk food and beer. <laughs> bro, let's do this IPA. Let's just pour it into the same one. Um, this is from uh, Ad Sloan, Vocation Life and Death IPA. Vocationbrewery.com. Uh, it says, uh, oh, okay. From our hilltop in Yorkshire, we're rather set benchmarks than trends, only making beer that we're proud to put our name on. It's what drives us. It's what makes us. It's our vocation. Vocation. We're digging into it. Look, I spilled my other beer all over the desk. I need another beer, stat. I don't care. We'll just pour it right on top of that stout. Just get a little bit of that, you know, American stouty goodness mixed with some genuine Yorkshire England IPA, bro. Look at that head. Ooh. Okay, slow down, Grim Grain. Yeah, great. That is delicious. Fuck, that is a delicious beer. Uh, sweet and grapefruity, strong pine from this IPA. Strong pine, strong pine flavor from this IPA. You just get that piney, that piney flavor. Hoppy, piney, not bitter in any way. It doesn't make me pucker. It just, it's like juiciness. You know, when you when you eat like something citrusy or, or, or like oranges or lemons, like I said, citrus, and you get that like watering in your jowls, this IPA, this vocation IPA, water in the jowls, life and death, really water in the jowls tonight. This is a jowl wateringly good vlog. Ad Sloan, Cloud Cartel UK. Shout out Cloud Cartel UK. Thank you for the coils. Thank you for the beer. Thank you for the junk food. Shout out to the UK. As we're as we're going to, to discover within the next uh, few minutes, what are we at? Five? We've been going an hour? Unacceptable. Let's do a real quick, maybe like 15 minute news and advocacy segment. And then we're going to get right to Super Chats, right to the AMA. That's where I want to spend uh, That's where I want to spend most of my time. Cool? Are we cool with that? I know I did see some Super Chats come in, but I'm going to save them until right after the uh, news and advocacy. Yeah. News and advocacy. Yeah. Yeah. I just sang that one day. <laughs> I just sang that one day. Oh. I don't know why uh, my software tells me, it gives me a warnings and alerts when things are going well. Usually software is like, eh, problem, boom, error, oh, this is broken. My streaming software goes, hey, everything's fine. Hey, your mic is working as normal. It's like, hey, that bumper played and now it's muted. I'm like, thank you. God. <laughs> I'm sure I know how to turn those off. So what do we have for some news and advocacy today, you guys? The, the vaping tobacco control landscape is out of control. I'm going to share some things that I always share, right? So we're talking about CASA. That's the Consumer Advocates for Smoke-Free Alternatives. Safer Nicotine Wiki. This is our webpage. It's, we can edit it. It's a Wikipedia, basically. It's a wiki of all safer nicotine. This is where we compile science and data and evidence and uh, and everything that goes along with safer nicotine products in the safer nicotine wiki. 
For all my Canadian peeps right there, tobaccokills.ca and rights for vapors. I'm not going to not promote them. Um, tobaccokills.ca is a bit of a call to action and uh, rights for vapors is a bit of a, more of a group. Uh, they, they have been tweeting at me recently on Twitter and I'm not quite sure... They, I, apparently they do a show and I would, and they want me to come on their show. So I'm like, cool. Rights for vapors, dude. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about rights for vapors. So I'm on board. And then of course, Gregory Connolly, the American Vaping Association. If you're an American vapor, get hooked up with the American Vaping Association. If you're a consumer advocate, like I'm a consumer advocate, right up here, you get hooked up with CASA, the consumer advocates. So we'll have links for all of these items down in the description, as well as the Yorkshire Cancer Research Center. They did this great video, you guys, called Vaping Demystified. I think, you know, I feel like I'm beating a dead horse here. Sorry. There's going to be another one, but, you know, it's like I can't control it. They just happen. I feel like I beat a dead horse here, but the Yorkshire Cancer Research Center Vaping Demystified video is one of the greatest videos I've ever seen in my life. I'm going to have a link to it down in the description. Just go watch it. It's like a quick 30-minute excellent vaping documentary. Excellent vaping documentary from the standpoint of harm reduction, you know, viewed through the lens of the Yorkshire Cancer Research Center. It's incredible. Uh, watch it. Share it. I'll have that... Uh, I'll have that down in the description. Let's see. See, I knew this was going to be a condensed news and advocacy. Um, oh, here's some news. Dash Vapes. Dash Vapes is back on YouTube. Yeah. They, start, they started a new YouTube. Uh, their YouTube got deleted by YouTube. And, you know, I, I love Dash Vapes. I love Dave Dash Vapes. You know, he's just Dave Dash Vapes. You know, he's just that guy, Dave. I love Dave from Dash Vapes and I love Dash Vapes. And, the, you know, the Dash Vapes narrative is like, we don't know why our YouTube got taken down. I know why your YouTube got taken down. It was links in the description, bro. <laughs> That's what it was. It was links in the description. Dash Vapes is a shop and across all their videos, they just had links to their shop. And that's not allowed on YouTube. That's why your channel got taken down. That's why it got taken down. As a YouTuber, like this is my career. Like this is my livelihood I have to follow all of the rules. And, and I'm not bringing that up to like drag Dash Vapes through the mud or anything. I'm bringing it up because this was a, this was a rule change that happened pretty quickly on YouTube. And every other vape YouTube had to pivot suddenly and go back like I did, thankfully, with the help of my main man, Jeremy V. But... Every, all 1,000 plus of my videos on YouTube all got descriptions edited one at a time and got all of the links taken out, just deleted all of the links from all of my YouTube channel, all of my YouTube descriptions on 1,000 plus videos so that YouTube would have no reason to go, hey, you're posting links to controlled substances. We're going to take your YouTube down. I have to follow the rules. And I, and the only reason I know that's a rule is because I don't want my YouTube taken down. <laughs> so I do everything I can to prevent that. It's the same thing with, uh, it's the same thing with this, with paid promotions. I've had some people asking me recently about why, why my videos have paid promotions on them. And the reason that they have paid promotions on them is because I wasn't following the rules earlier. And I'm glad that YouTube did not, did not ding me for it. According to the YouTube terms of service, you can read it right here. If you accept anything of value from a third party to make your video, you have to mark this box, which means if I got this clutch mech mod free of charge from Dovpo for the purpose of review, even if there no money is exchanging hands, it's literally just the product that is considered something of value and you have to mark this box. You just have to. In, in fact, it was Zophie on, on uh, Twitter that brought this to my attention. Uh, and she's like, here's the rules. And I went, oh, fuck, okay, that, that is straight up the rules. That's the YouTube rules. And the problem is, the idea behind this, like checking this box is, is transparency, right, for the viewer. 
you, the viewer can watch a video and go, oh, if this has a paid promotion, you might think differently about it. The problem is this paid promotion thing on YouTube has become like the California Prop 65 thing where it's everywhere and it doesn't mean anything anymore. It just doesn't mean anything anymore. So you have to mark this if you get something for free, if any money has exchanged hands, if there's any promotion involved, but it all gets caught in this paid promotion bucket. And so you can watch a review or a video of something. And if it says paid promotion, that could mean a multitude of things. It could mean that all they did was get this for free, in which case they'd have to mark it. It could mean that someone got this for free and uh, who manufactured this? Dovpo goes, uh, also, I want to give you $500 to review this. There's no differentiation. It's meaningless. Everything, every video I'm ever going to upload moving forward is going to include this because something in the video I did not pay for. And I'm trying to follow the rules. I'm trying to follow the rules. So there you go. Dash Vapes is back. Sorry, I'm not trying to rag on Dash. I love Dave and I love Dash Vapes and I am overjoyed to see him back on YouTube. We need more vape content on YouTube. I'll link down the description to Mother Truck and Dash Vapes. I missed his videos. I've been trying to keep up with the Dash Vapes videos off of YouTube, but it's difficult and I'm glad to see them back on YouTube. Okay, let's keep cranking through some news and advocacy real quick here. Oh, look at that. I met my, my, my move goal. <laughs> I met my move goal. Yeah, I wear two dongles, weird dongles on my wrist. Here's some more news from uh, the interwebs. Gotti Juice, we're back. Great news, everyone. We're back. We have partnered with vaping.com in order to continue shipping You Got E Juice to your door. There are a lot of companies out there. Element Vape is one of them. Eight Vape is one of them. Multitude of companies. And now we're adding Got E Juice to the list. If you've been following everything going on with the vape industry, you probably already know about the PACT Act that has made shipping to consumers very difficult. Our partners at vaping.com have taken on the burden of being compliant in order to ship products to your doorstep. Of course, that means there's a few things to expect. In order for them to be compliant, you will see the excise tax added to your orders. This is what the PACT Act is all about. The PACT Act is all about taxes, all about excise taxes. Please bear with them as these are the taxes automatically calculated by your local government. You will also notice that shipping could be slightly higher. Vaping.com is offering free shipping over $75. When you go to yougotejuice.com and you click on your juice, you will be directed automatically to the vaping.com website. Plus, vaping.com has offered a 15% off coupon code to get you started. You can use the code yegvebjip15 to receive your discount. So if you're low on e-juice or you're just looking to restock, literally no affiliation with this company whatsoever. I've never ordered from them or tried their e-liquids in any way, but it's an option right now. If you're in an area where you don't have vape shops and you're really relying on that vape mail, you got e-juice. You can do it. You got e-juice. And additionally, on a side note, I personally have been trying to conserve my juice a little bit. I was, uh, I saw a comment the other day on YouTube where someone was talking about, I stopped dripping after the vape mail ban. I stopped dripping because I can't blow through that much juice anymore. And I thought, holy shit, that is a really good idea. There's going to be unintended consequences of this vape mail ban, you know? And so I've personally been aware of how much liquid I'm consuming and I'm trying to conserve my liquid a little bit more, which is why Maybe I'll use a, a K-Fun or a pod or a billet box more often than maybe I'm going to go to a dripper because I can plow through like a 60 mil bottle in a few days on a dripper. And I can be able to get that uh, e-juice, that e-liquid quite as easy. Is there a vaping bogan in the house? Holy shit, dude. Sup, dickheads? It only sounds cool if you're Australian. I can't say that as a California guy. I can't be like, hey, what's up, dickheads? How are you dickheads doing today? You, 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 you damn dickheads. <laughs> but if you're Australian, then it sounds charming, you know? <laughs> it sounds charming. Anyway, appreciate you being here, Bogan. 
There's a call to action happening in, uh, well, this is nationwide, really. So this is from the United Vapors Alliance, and this is their call to action. Their call to actions are not quite the same as CASA call to actions, and I don't mean that in a negative way, but with the UVA call to actions, there's no sort of like... Uh, just fill it in, sign your name, hit the send button, boosh, it goes off to your congressman, your representatives, your whatever. The UVA call to action is more of a, hey, call. Call Dick Durbin. Email Dick Durbin. And what this is referring to is S1314. S1314 is a Dick Durbin, Raja Krishnamurthy bill that is set to level tobacco taxes in the United States. So the idea is that why is cigarettes so heavily taxed and why are vaping products so lightly taxed? They're the same thing. So they should be perfectly even. Dick Durbin and Rajna Krishnamurthy, this, this is what they want. This is what they're going after. This is what S12, S1314 is. It says sin taxes uh, affect the poor. Over 480,000 highly taxed smoking related deaths a year. Proves they do, proves they deter nothing. Yes, that is the message that the UVA is sending is that sin taxes don't deter anything. And that is a fine platform to stand on, but it's, it's not the platform that I would choose to stand on when fighting against S1314. The platform I think we should be standing on is why are you trying to detour less harmful alternatives? Why are you trying to deter people from switching from smoking to vaping. If there's no incentive for people to switch from smoking to vaping, they're just gonna continue to smoke and they're just gonna continue to die. I think the better argument for Dick Durbin is that this is actively going to cause smoking rates to go up again. We, we, we tried to warn you about the black market and you didn't listen and now there's a huge flourishing black market. We tried to tell you that smokers would go back to smoking and now cigarette sales are on the rise again. All this legislation is going to do is increase smoking rates. If you have this product that's a less harmful product that's more expensive than this product, which is the harmful product, where's the incentive to use the one that's less harmful? There is none. There is none and that is, uh, that's fucking criminal. So call, get mad, email Dick Durbin, Use whatever messaging you want. You don't have to necessarily use the sin taxes don't deter anything. I think there's better platforms to stand on than just ragging on sin taxes. Because, I mean, yeah, sin taxes don't do anything. But also, you can't de-incentivize people to quit smoking and expect people to quit smoking, Dick Durbin. You just can't. Sorry. So in some other quick news that isn't really news, that doesn't really matter, is... U.S. Postal Service postpones the ban on sending vapes via mail. So this isn't, I don't even really know why I'm saying this. The U.S. Postal Service is delaying a ban on sending vape mail products through the mail, saying the agency needs more time to review how to implement the changes ordered by Congress. So this is something we've talked about a lot in the past. Congress just dumped this off on USPS and USPS is going, we don't know what to do. So... We're going to take a little bit of time to get this done. The way that this article is presented is like it, it kind of presents it as like the possibility that something could change. Like, oh, they've been lobbied by cannabis industry and talking about how it's going to hurt their business and that, that something could possibly change in this. I, you know, I'm generally a, an optimist. I don't think anything's going to change with the vape mail ban. I think it's just... A thing that's just going to happen. I would be shocked if hardware was excluded or something like that. I think it's just going to happen. And this is just another delay by like a few weeks, maybe a month or something like that. So if you didn't get to stock up, stock up on some liquids, get a second mod, get some, uh, you know a backup RDA, RTA, something like that. You can rebuild where you don't have to you know purchase coil heads through the mail constantly. So... Look, I'll put a link down in the description. It says, despite our best efforts in order to ensure thorough and thoughtful consideration of this complex issue and voluminous comments by industry, individual, and government stakeholders, the Postal Service is unable to publish the final rule by today's target date. They'll be releasing the rule as soon as possible. And when USPS ever releases the rule, it goes into effect, boosh, right away. 
100% boom right away. Okay, let's wrap this up. This is this is this is getting out of hand. Uh if there's one link in the description that is the most critical, important, greatest shareable informational link that exists on God's green earth, it's this one. Electronic cigarettes for smoking cessation, Cochrane Living Systematic Review. We've talked about the Cochrane Library in the past here on the vlog. We talked about a, a, you know a bit on TBN as well. This is this is the most pure, empirically heavyweight science possible. If you are ever talking to anybody on social media or Twitter or anything about vaping, this is literally like the mic drop of links. Electronic cigarettes for smoking cessation. The Cochrane Library has been evaluating electronic cigarettes for smoking cessation since 2014. They've been doing what's called meta-analysis where they seek out studies, randomized controlled trials, ethnological studies, everything. They hold it up to their standard and they weed some of them out. They go, this one's too biased. This one's whatever. This one, you know, the methodology was wrong. But these other studies, we're going to add this to our ever growing list of, you know, studies and evidence that show yeah, absolutely. E-cigarettes for smoking cessation. They've been releasing these, like I said, since 2014. They did it in 2016, 2018, and finally 2020. And in 2020, it kind of became this living, what they call a living systematic review. Since coming out of the market over a decade ago, e-cigs have caused considerable stir in the public health community. It is of prime importance that the debate around this issue be based on high quality, relevant, and up-to-date scientific data. We want to be able to include all the evidence as it becomes available to ensure that these findings are as comprehensive as possible. With support from Cancer Research UK, which is essentially their like American Cancer Society, we are searching monthly for new evidence for our Cochrane Review of Electronic Cigarettes for Smoking Cessation. Cochrane systematic reviews are recognized as the highest standard in evidence-based healthcare, bringing together primary research data to facilitate evidence-based choices about health interventions. In April 2021, the first April 2021, the first update to the review since it became a living review has been published. This is all of the data. This is all of the science. This is so many ophthalmological studies. This is so many randomized controlled trials. This is the Cochrane GD Library. This is the Center for Evidence-Based Medicine. This is the University of Oxford, UK. This is the mic drop of all science mic drops. And I'm going to post a link down in the description. I would encourage you to read it, you know, read it and wade through it. It gets to be a little overwhelming, but right, Nephron, it's nice to be on the right side of science. It is really nice to be on the right side of science. And vaping is definitely on the right side of science. I have no doubt, no doubt in my mind. So the last thing I want to share here in the news and advocacy, plenty of time. Uh, nationally, so this is a this is a graphic from Charles Gardner. I had Charles Gardner, PhD, on uh, TBN a few weeks ago. I'll post a link down in the description. You can watch that whole interview. It's really really good. But he is an incredibly like almost offensively smart guy. It's one of those like, how did why are you so smart? <laughs> what? Do you ever get tired of being correct all the time, Charles Gardner? So he posted this graphic and this chart that you're about to see is based on National Youth Tobacco Survey data. It, it includes uh, JAMA, you know, NIH data, a survey of 12, 1,200 kids. And it also includes the, uh, the uh, son of a bitch, can't remember the name of the study. Yes, monitoring the future study as well. So this covers vaping, smoking, sex, drugs, rock and roll, all the good things in life. And this is high school students. So the first thing that you're going to notice on this chart is nine out of 10 high school students do, do not vape at all. That's, that's nine out of 10. Do not vape at all. Things that U.S. teens do, but probably should not do. 
Monitoring the Future 2021. This is a survey funded by uh, NIH. That's the National Institute of Health. And if you look at that first line, just under 15% of 50, 50% of kids, dude, they're banging. They're banging all over the place. Sexual intercourse. This is from the uh, YRBS, the Youth Risk Behavior Survey. Banging all over the place. Look at, look at below that. Just under 40% Past 30 day alcohol use, four zero, 40 percent of high schoolers are using alcohol. Look below that, just over 20 percent of high school kids are smoking weed, using whatever illegal drugs, just under that, like 15 percent of high school kids are binge drinking, binge drinking. And then underneath that is ever use. So past 30 day vaping. That line is the quote unquote epidemic of youths vaping. That past 30 day vaping is once, even if it was just once in the last 30 days, twice in the last 30 days, congratulations. You are an ever user. You have engaged in past 30 day vaping. You are on this chart. That's the epidemic. And then if you look way below that, barely breaking 4% is high school daily vaping. That 4.4% number is the reason that we have a vape mail ban. That 4.4% number of daily high school vapors is the reason why we have PAVE, is the reason why we have flavor bans. It's the reason why we have sin taxes. And if you look at people like PAVE and Aaron Mills, what are they upset about? Vaping. Now Aaron Mills, she's all about pot smoking. She hates it. She wants it banned again. It's like they have a blind spot for alcohol. It's like vaping. Oh my gosh. Let's ban it. Alcohol. No. Okay. That's whatever. Wait, weed. Ooh, let's ban that. And then you go, what about the 15% of high school students that are goddamn binge drinking? Aaron Mills blinders. Nope. Sorry, it's like kids holding beers. Nope, just gonna look the other way. You guys aren't vaping, are you? Just alcohol? Okay. So long as you're not vaping or using weed, I'm not gonna throw, just booze? Okay, I have blinders on for booze. Hey, that's fine. That 4.4%, that is the epidemic. That is why we have a male vape male ban. Blinders on. They have blinders on and it makes me insane. So let's wrap it up. That's it. News and advocacy done. Boosh out of the way. What I would like to do right now is I'm going to roll the super chat bumper. We're going to get into this AMA right now. And I have to go take a really quick bio break and I'm going to try to be back and I won't be back. Okay. Bye. Oh shit, not even close. You guys just had to sit there at a black screen. I'm sorry. That was like the, I'm sorry, man. I am sorry. That was, uh, okay. Let's have a beer. Let's do uh, let, let's hydrate real quick before we get to any.
Okay, now, now you guys, we are ready to get through some of these super chats. If you guys have any questions for me whatsoever, this is, I don't have a bumper. It's the official beginning, whatever. Ask me whatever you'd like to ask me. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll lay some guidelines down. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm mostly an open book, apart from like some really deeply personal stuff that I might avoid answering. It's, it's whatever. I'm kind of going to be an open book. Uh, you, you, you know, whatever, honestly, whatever. Let's just do the damn thing. Um, I don't remember exactly where I left off in the super chats. I'm going Josh, Dan, Barbara, Shane, Gabe Claus. That's right. Rising Phoenix, Rhett, Taylor. Yeah. Taylor from Wisconsin. Josh, don't worry, man. I'm a true fan and you don't even know it. So 10 will do. Hope to meet you someday, Josh. <laughs> Look, if you're here tonight, then you're a real fan. That's, I mean, it's whatever. Even if you're not here tonight, even if you're watching this on the replay, you are a real fan. If you are watching this on the replay, like two years later, like the year is 2023 and you're like, I want to check out Grim Green's vlog from fucking the end of April in 2021 and you're here watching it. You're a real fan too. Josh, I really appreciate that, bro. Shane, salt knit guy here. Loving the vlogs, Grim. Uh, keep vaping. Brought baked into the shop. It is straight fire. Thanks for the advocacy you do. Shane, Yes. Uh, next week, I'm going to throw that uh, email that you sent me out there for some news and advocacy. I feel like people need to know about that. I'm doing, if you have any more research that you've done that you want to email to me, um, please send it over. I've been digging into it. And uh, yeah, don't vape salt, Nick. Don't sub on salt, Nick, you guys. <laughs> please, please do not sub on salt, Nick's. Um, but thank you, Shane. I very much appreciate that. Um, message retracted from Kate. What, what, what are you doing there? Why are you retracting your message, bud? Appreciate that, though. Uh, Tribal Buddha. Real men wear pink. Fuck yeah, they do. Actually, you know what? Real men. Real men wear whatever the fuck they want. That's what real men do. Wear whatever you want. Uh, Lomka three, uh, watching vlogs since 15 cheers from Lithuania. Holy cow, buddy. Lomka three. Thank you so much for being here. Wow. Watching since 2015, bro. That's crazy. Thank you. Lithuania. Holy cow. Bro, thank you very much. Um, Blackhawk 2029. Hey, Grim, have a couple of extra bucks for once. I wanted to thank you for all you do for the community. Also, Mod Maker makes LDPE squonk bottles. Okay, hang on. Let me get this into Google real fast. L hang on. LDPE bottles. Okay, Mod Maker. Okay. Oh, yep. Okay. I've tracked them down. Mod Maker LDPE bottles. Sick. Thank you. Thank you for that, Blackhawk. Uh, Southern Comfort, maybe you shouldn't get another beer. What? What? Southern Comfort. What? Your name is Southern Comfort. <laughs> I feel like you'd be, of all people, you'd be like, yeah, bro, get another beer. Hamish, that's very gracious of you. Better late than never. Team Green Pickle. Shout out to Addy Tooney, Jeremy V. Give Pickle a wet one from down under. Whoa, Hamish. How well do you think you know my wife? I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding, buddy. I'll definitely, uh, you know, maybe. Uh... Kevin K. Pumped about the retro vapes I'll be sending you with your nitro vanilla porter on Saturday morning. Uh, wish I got here for the beginning of the vlog. All good, Kevin K. I am w as well am very looking forward to those retro vapes. We got some, Kevin K is going to send out some retro vapes that uh, I never got to try. And it's great being able to like catch up on some products that I never even tried because like 2015 and 2016 and 2017 and I mean, all these years have just flown by just crazy and it's like oh here's a thousand products and it's like i got to try like 50 of them you know and so there's been a lot of these products over the years that like shit this are you kidding me the widowmaker rta from vandy vape and el mondo vapador never tried it never knew about it never tried it finally got to try one uh and it's been nice 
it's just been cool catching up with some stuff that I might have missed. And uh, I like going back to that fishy. Fishy, I love you, bro. Thank you. That's very gracious of you, my man. You didn't have to, but you did. I appreciate it. Oh, that's right. Paradox Art. I make the hoodies. It's paradoxart.shop. Sorry for not adding a note. That's me. Ha ha. You're the man. P.S. Got another package coming to you soon. Okay. Paradoxart.shop. I'll post that link down in the description. I don't know why I'm yelling. I don't know why I'm yelling. Paradox shop. This is the paradox shop, the graphic, and then the, you know, it's like the whatever. It's like the iced tea, right? It's like the iced tea. Sick, bro. Thank you, Pandora Art. Pandora. Pandorox Art. Like I said, I'll post a link down in the description. I appreciate that. Jeremy, I don't know if this has been asked. Uh, where did the name Grim come from? Hashtag replay crew. This is a question that I have answered, Jeremy, no less than 8,000 times. But I'm very happy to answer it again. Yeah, Widowmaker, you guys. Um. Grim. So it's spelled Grim, G R I M M, because I am bad at spelling. And I legitimately thought that that is how you spelled Grim. Like, Grim has definitely two M's. I remember the night I was making this YouTube account and I thought Grim definitely has two M's, G R I M M, Green. It's wrong, but the name is a holdover from my prior days uh, being a really big uh, part of like the Disneyland fandom. Um, I was an active member and poster on the Mice Chat forums, and I went by Grim Green over there, and it all came from Disneyland. I'm a huge Disney fan. I'm a huge Disneyland, Disney World theme park fan. There's an attraction at the Disneyland called the Haunted Mansion, and I love it. it it's so fun. It's just one of the best rides ever. I, I can't not go on the Haunted Mansion. And the song that plays in the Haunted Mansion, um, the track when you're in the graveyard scene, it's called uh, uh, Grim Grinning Ghosts. So when I was signing up for the Mice Chat Forum, I liked the Haunted Mansion. I chose Grim from Grim Grinning Ghosts, and I threw my last name on there. Green, just like the color, became Grim Green. I could have been so many other things on this YouTube. You could have been watching Cosmic Doom right now. You could have been watching Venti Green. Yeah, I used to go by Venti Green once upon a time when I was really working at Starbucks, and I was like super into Starbucks, and I was like Venti Green. So I called myself Venti Green for a while. I called myself Green Machine for a while, be thankful. I almost went with Green Machine. Would you have watched any vape videos from someone named Green Machine? I mean, maybe. So uh, we ended up with Grim Green and it all stems from just nerdy Disney stuff because I'm a nerdy Disney fan and I really like the Haunted Mansion and that's kind of where my name, uh, that's kind of where it all came from, honestly. And I don't mind if people call me Nick would not mind at all if uh, if we're at a vape show like in June in NVE at Mohegan Sun. You don't have to shout Grim from across the room. You can shout Nick, and chances are I'll turn around faster than if I uh, than if I hear the word uh, Grim. But uh, that's how that happened, Jeremy. Thank you. I appreciate that. Fuck YouTube. Yeah, taxing vapes the same as cigarettes is a sin tax error. Yes, it's ridiculous. Fuck YouTube. It's it's insane. It's, I mean, it makes no sense. And there's no like good comparison. You can, you can, you can even give it. It's like, would you tax water at the same rate that you tax liquor? You know, it's that big of a margin of difference. Hamish, you work. Appreciate that. Hamish. Uh, I have a question. Okay. Zaddy vapes. What's up? Zaddy vapes. I have a question. I'm curious on the business side, when a reviewer has a tank or a mod, what is the usual deal? A couple bucks a unit or getting rich? Oh, I see what you mean. So you're talking about um, if like, uh, I can't even think. So you can use the clutch as an example, I guess. Mike Vapes, Dovpo, 
uh, signature tips and the clutch mech mod. So uh, generally what happens is a, a, a Chinese company will generally approach you. That's what happens first. You, rare, you rarely have to sell, you, you rarely have to pitch to Chinese companies. If you have a name in vaping, um, even if it's, you know, whatever, bigger, smaller names, I don't care about that shit. But, you know, even if, you, if you're a name in vaping, Chinese companies will actively just reach out to you and send you things like, hey, look at this. Uh, do you want to redesign it and put your name on it? Hey, look at this pod system. Do you want to redesign it and put your name on it? Generally, the the deal is, uh, I mean, it's different for everybody. I can't I can't say. I have personally only worked once with Hellvape doing this type of deal where you make, you, you you know, you set it up so that you get maybe a buck a unit sold. So, and and it's you can set it up, you know, it's up to the individual. However, they want to set up whatever deal they're working with, whatever Chinese company, it'll work out to whatever you think you, that you deserve to get paid. And you could push for like two or three bucks a unit, but China will probably just laugh at you. Um, uh, you know, there's a reason without, I don't want to dox the guy and I don't want to, you know, drag his name through the mud or anything like that. But there's a reason why Vaping Heathen did the dead rabbit and then just disappeared out of vaping because... Oh yeah, he made his dime off of the dead rabbit. That was, I can quit vaping and I can remodel my house and I can, leave, you know, that's how much money he made. So it's different for everybody. And I'm not going to say that anybody's making like money hand over fist, but chances are if there's a reviewer that has released a lot of products with companies, they've probably made some really good money off of that. They've probably made some really good money off of that. Like I said, a buck, a buck a unit, a buck or two a unit is really kind of tr what you try to go for. Um, the the way that I've released products in, into the industry is self funded with Dwayne. That was always like I felt like that was a much better way to go. Where when you make a deal with China, you kind of are selling your soul a little bit. It doesn't feel good. You don't have the control that you think people have on their products. You don't get that control. You get, I, when I'm releasing a product, when I'm releasing the recoil, the rebel, the whatever, I want the final say. That's my final say, because that's my product. When you work with China, oftentimes you do not get that final say they'll go, we're putting this on the package. And you go, oh, I kind of didn't want that. And they go, we don't care. We're going to do it anyway. Sometimes you don't get that final say. And so when me and Dwayne did the recoil, we self-funded it. We paid for the prototypes. We, we paid for everything. We ordered it wholesale. We sold it. You know, that's the way that we did it. Um, and I'm not saying that one's better than the other, but Look, it's just different ways to do it. And like I said, it's up to each individual person how much or how little you want to work with China. I worked with China one time for the Hell Vape Grim Kit, and I got uh, <laughs> just right up the ass with, a, with like a just an iron stick, you know, just punk. Ugh. And so that sucks. And so that was a learning lesson for me. Like, oh, okay, not going to do that. Not going to do that anymore. I mean, it would have to be a really sweet deal to get me to work with China again. Um, but thank you for your question, Zaddy Vapes. I, and, you know, and I'm not trying to like throw reviewers under the bus or anything. Like, look, this is this is your whole job. This is my whole job. I put my whole body and self and mind and spirit and whatever into this. And so, if this is your full time job, there's no reason why. Uh, you know, Rip Trippers with um, over a million subs, why should he not be getting paid for, for reviewing stuff? Like he built up that audience. He did the hard work. He should get to reap the rewards of that. So I have no problems with anybody making deals with China, selling stuff, selling RTAs, selling RDAs, selling Macs. Like good, good for you. Hustle, get your money. You know, that's just the way I feel for it. I'm, I'm excited for, you know, when anybody can... Uh, when anybody can do something they love full time. Uh, Aaron Mac, you said you got an E-Leaf Power 2 on the way. I have no idea what that is. I haven't had E-Leaf products in a while, but uh, kick ass. Let me know how you like it, bro. Hamish. Oh, Hamish. How's dad doing? Um, 
dad's doing pretty good. He's still working full time. He works for Sony. Um, he's working on kind of launching his own new company, which damn it, that's just, you know, I think that's one of the coolest things ever. Here he is at 73 plus years old. He's had Parkinson's disease for 30 of those years. And, uh, he just keeps proving all his doctors wrong. And, uh, He's starting up a new company and I think it's going to be really, really cool. And so, you know, I'm trying to support him as much as I can. And, you know, it, uh, he's doing, thank you, Hamish, for asking, but he's, he's doing just as good as you can do after having Parkinson's for 30 years of your life. That's how good he's doing. You know, we still goof off. We still talk about like Star Wars and Star Trek and drones and cameras and, you know, but he's doing, uh, he's doing pretty good, Hamish. I really appreciate that. Mike P., uh, got a question from Mike P who says, as a small YouTuber, I'd like to know your YouTube journey and the struggles that came with pursuing that career, uh, building an audience, et cetera, yak remix whip. <laughs> what? What? Yaks remix whip. All right, Mike P. Um, you know, here's the thing with YouTube is I didn't, I didn't set out, uh, to do this didn't, didn't, didn't have any intention of that. This was going to be a job or like a career or that, I mean, officially as of like this summer, I'll have worked for myself longer than I worked for Starbucks. And that is a crazy thing that that's an, that is crazy to me because I, you know, I was never an entrepreneurial person. I didn't want to work for myself. I felt like that was way too much work and way too much responsibility. And like the only examples I had in my life of people working for themselves were like kind of bankrupted businesses. And I thought, you know, I don't want to, I want to have a job. You know, I'm, I'm good with Starbucks. I have a career. I have a steady paycheck. This is good. The idea of doing this by myself was horrifying. <laughs> I mean, completely, completely horrifying. Um, one thing I would suggest is, you know, it's what frames is doing. You just, you just grind and you grind and you grind and it sucks. And it's, and you grind and you grind. And I worked, I spent five years on graveyard shift with my full-time job working 12 hour graveyard shifts. And then I would come home and grind away on grim green for years on end. In fact, if you watch any grim green video between like 2012 and 2013, 2011 and 2013, it's all like, while I'm working on graveyard, I would get off of work. I would come home. I would shoot and edit videos. I would answer emails and it would just, I would try to upload as much content as possible. And it wasn't ever like a conscious, like, I would like to try to do this full time. Honestly, I was just having a, a lot of fun with it. I loved the community. I loved the industry. I felt like, wow, this is a really, really, really fun hobby that I have. You know, I get to, uh, pardon me, I get to help smokers quit. I get to talk about fun vape stuff. I get to build RDAs and I get to be on YouTube and man, this is just so much fun. And I had no intention ever of monetizing it ever or having it be my job ever, Mike P ever. I'm sorry if I'm getting off track. I had a feeling some of these would be some long answers, but I just never had, you know, any desire to do it. In fact, there was one time I actually got upset with Volcano e and I owe them an apology. <laughs> I owe, uh, what was his name? Mike or... Dave, an apology because at one of the vape fests back in like 2011 or something like this, and I was there and he's like, Hey man, I really love what you're doing with your YouTube. And I was like, Oh, thank you. I'm having, you know, it's so great being part of this industry and like this community is so wonderful. He's like, he's like, yeah, but you're being dumb. I was like, Whoa, bro, what the fuck? Like you just, what, like what, where is this coming from? He's like, you're not making any money. Are you? And I was like, no, I do all of this pro bono. Anybody wants to send me anything, I'll review it for free. I'll upload it for free. I'm just excited to be a part of this. And he's like, that's dumb. You should be making money. You should be, your time is valuable and you should be making money. And I went, no. <laughs> for another like three years, I was like, no, I don't need to make money off of this. And then it's whatever. In 2014, it came to the point where it was like, 
look, this, this vaping Grim Green YouTube thing is taking up more of my time than my full-time job. And it's going to come to a point where I'm going to have to decide what I want to do. And thankfully, in that moment, I decided that I would leave the world of coffee and Starbucks behind and really try to make a go of this YouTube thing. And it was the single most terrifying thing I have ever done ever in my life, ever, Mike P., ever. I have never been more anxiety ridden than I was in 2014 when I tried to do this full time. So here's the advice I'll give you, Mike P. Just crank away and have fun. If you make good videos, people will watch them and people will gravitate towards them. You don't, you know, your first thousand subscribers is a really big deal. And you don't focus on dumb shit. Don't focus on being popular. Don't focus on having the most subscribers. Focus on your audience and you can't lose. You can't lose. And the struggles that come along with it is you're going to have good days and you're going to have really bad days. And, you know, <laughs> it's going to be, it's, it's a long time going. It's a long time going. And I remember way back in 2009 when I started getting some traction and people started watching my videos and like, People started commenting and asking me questions. And I was like, oh, holy shit. Okay. Hi. You watch my YouTube. That's crazy, bro. Like it was, it blew me away. And it still kind of blows me away to this day. It still kind of blows me away to this day that there's people hanging out right now that want to ask me a question. It makes no sense. So I would say, as a small YouTuber, have fun. Make sure you're always having fun. That's all. That's all I'm going to tell people from now on is make sure you're always having fun. I always used to tell people, get a good camera, get a good mic, try to set up some lightings, look up, don't look down, you know, but just have fun. If you're having fun with it, if you're having fun building and reviewing shit, then just keep doing it. Keep doing it, man. Okay. Sorry. I spent way too long on that. Andrew, a big shout out to everyone in the chat and the entire vape community worldwide. Love you, Grim. Yo, yo. Okay. Hey, Andrew, there's some, there's some inspiring words. I appreciate that, man. New Wave Dave, what was the old rebuildable that you put on Instagram? Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, I had a picture of it. I don't have it anymore. Damn it. Why did you bring this up, New Wave Dave? It was a uh, circa 2011. Uh, that was an Atom. That was a t that was, the company was called Team Rampage. And that product was called the Atom. And what a-D-A-M, like the name, Adam, not Atom, like Atom Bomb, <laughs> Adam, A-D-A-M. And it was an upside down Genesis. And you're, it's going to be Im impossible to explain. I wish I had a picture, but basically your tank was on top and you had a wick poking up and your coil was below and your coil was wrapped around. It was an upside down Genesis. That's all it was, was an upside down Genesis. And the idea was that it would wick down better didn't, didn't, it was garbage. And, uh, the, the, the tank just got eaten through by liquid constantly. It was terrible. It was terrible. New wave, Dave. It was terrible. Hey, Mish, just because I feel, uh, bad, my stash of Tim Tams and Cadbury's didn't make it to you at Christmas. Self note, I have to redo. Listen, Tim Tams are also from God. Tim Tams were created by angels and sent to earth by God himself for us to eat. Tim Tams are delicious, Hamish. Appreciate that. Um, whoops, jump down to the bottom here. Dang. Sorry, you guys. I'm trying to go as fast as I can. Uh, oh, we got another one from Hamish. Only because ever AU Customs opened Grim Green merch from California Green equals weed. Yeah, Customs, it's as easy as that. Really? Did you have your Grim Green merch opened by Customs because they thought it was weed? That's kind of hilarious. Delirium. Uh, Mondo Vapador, not Mondo. Oh, means vaping monkey. Mono Vapador. Sorry. Sorry, Delirium. Sorry, Mono Vapador. Appreciate that. George Jennings, I was a three pack a day smoker with advanced COPD. Three years of vaping. My doctor says my lungs have never sounded better. Thanks for all you do. George, I love you, bro. That is fucking awesome. Three pack a day smoker, advanced COPD advanced COPD, three years of vaping. Doctor says your lungs have never sounded better. George, 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 George. I love that, George. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, Delirium says, Grim, my question is, 
Do you plan on expanding YouTube to other audiences outside of vaping? Have you ever felt the need to? Also, would you be my mom? Yes. Actually, that's really super creepy, but I'm still going to say yes, that I'll be your mom. Um, I, you know, I don't know what it, what it, uh, I don't know. I never really have thought about it. I like my audience. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm really blessed, you know, live, laugh, love. I'm really blessed. I think to have such a really great audience and a really great group of people. It's like, no, I mean, I don't really, I, I didn't get into YouTube. I didn't do this to have some sort of notoriety or to be the biggest vape YouTuber or the biggest YouTuber in general. I've always just wanted to have like a cool community of people, you know, that human connection. I've talked about this in the past ad nauseum, but that human connection, I'm really a big fan of. It's why, you know, when I go to vape shows or something like that, if you want to come up and talk to me, just do it. Just come up, say hi. I will talk to you. We can just hang out and you'll get my full attention because I feel like that's important. And I like that, that human connection. And I really like bringing people together. And so I am immensely satisfied and it, you know, I can't think of the word. It feels just very rewarding to have such a good group of people and such a good community that I don't like, why do I want to go outside of this? Why do I want to go where, you know, what am I going to do? What, what am I going to do? I'm, I was thinking about like mixing some other shit in. Like, uh, I was going to review Godzilla versus Kong just as a, as a movie. I was just going to review it, but I might not. But then again, I might, you know, I'm a wild card, baby. Look, this, this YouTube was built around vaping and we will always, always vaping and tobacco harm reduction are the core of what we do here. But there's so much more to this group of people and there's so much more to vapors than just vaping. It would be silly to not, uh, to not expand out, I guess. But then again, I have no real plans to, you know, I'm not trying to be no gamer. I'm not trying to start no only fans. I'm not trying to you know what? The, the vape community is my home. I love it here. And I, I where else am I going to go? Where I'm going to, where I'm going to meet, where else am I going to go? Where people are going to send me Jaffa cakes, nowhere, only in the vape community. <laughs> we get Jaffa cakes, but thank you. I appreciate that delirium. Um, Shane asks, uh, thank you for listening. Grim. I'll email you baked SFSC. Yeah, buddy. Shane has some, uh, we'll get to that probably next week. We'll talk about Shane. Shane, uh, or Mike P says, what happened with hell vape? Uh, it was, it was whatever. It was kind of just a bad situation to begin with. Uh, I don't know if I want to get into the ins and outs of it. The, basically what happened with hell vape is, um, the product that I released with hell vape happened, you know, in like that 2018 phase where, vaping was shrinking a little bit, you know, 2018 was the height of, uh, you know, the youth vaping epidemic and things like this. And so essentially we designed Dwayne and I designed this pod, this AIO with hell vape. And when it came time to release it, um, they released it and, you know, a couple of weeks go by, like a month or two goes by and, we get nothing. We get radio silence from hell vape. So we're kind of like, is it selling? How many are we selling? Is it doing pretty good? Are people enjoying it? You know, I want people to enjoy it. How's it going? Hell vape. And then hell vape basically said we overordered and we can't pay you. And that's it. And I have no recourse. I can't go, uh, hang on. I just have to go. Oh, okay. That's a bummer. And so the deal we ended up working out with Hell Vape was we bought as many as we could at, at cost and sold them on the Recoil RDA site. And that was the only way we were able to make money off of the Grim Kit. Grim Kits are still being sold today. And I have made this much off of Grim Kits from Hell Vape, this much money. I made, you know, Dwayne and I made some money from reselling them on our own website, but, uh, hell vape just kind of like pulled the rug right out from underneath you and go, sorry, no money. And you went, oh, okay, fuck. All right. Uh, cool. Well, there's a year, you know, that we spent with hell vape and then, uh, kind of just turned into, uh, nothing. 
Now, we're going to keep going here. We're going to be running long, but I'm going to um, take a bio break real quickly, you guys. So I'm just going to leave you with some tunes. I will be right back. Okay. Where is my music? Oh, here you go. I'll be right back. Just going to go take a quick little pee-pee. How's that song? Is that a good song? I don't know. Is that a good song? God, I feel so much better. Let's have some more beer. Let's have some more VAPs. Let me get some VAPs down. Uh, so Mike P, I hope that answers your question. I don't necessarily want to speak to that so much. Um, it's whatever. All right, the deal just went sour, you know, it just went south and there's nothing I could do about it. And it's kind of like, whatever, lesson learned, you know, don't, uh, don't work with hell vape anymore. Um, Jay Blaze, uh, let's see, that's a good question. Um, Jay Blaze asks, what happened to the Culture of Clouds podcast? So the Culture of Clouds podcast, you know, we had a real good run. We had a really, really great run. Truly and honestly, I loved that podcast and I loved being a part of it. And when I started a pod, when I had the idea to first start a podcast back in 2015 at ECC, there wasn't anybody that I wanted to do a podcast other than Ruby Roo. Um, we were just really great friends. We, we got along so well and we had such a great banter. And so we started a podcast and we started the culture of clouds and we had a good few years run, you know, we had a good few years there. And, uh, you know, what ended up happening is it's fine. Ruby Rude just, she got a job. Um, you know, the, her YouTube wasn't sustaining her anymore. Her, her business wasn't sustaining her anymore. And so, um, she went and got a job and kind of, you know, I, I knew that this was happening. We talked about this a bunch, you know, kind of leading up to it and I kind of knew what was happening. And we got, you know, we decided, well, let's just, let's just call it like a hiatus for now until maybe we can work out a time. Like maybe we can take a Saturday on the weekends, like two hours on a Saturday or something to record a podcast. Like that could be a thing. I know she has a full-time job now, so I'm not, you know, I'm not, it's, it's a no pressure situation. And the hiatus just became like the reality that, Hey, this just, it's probably not going to happen anymore. It's just, it kind of is going to be a dead in the water thing. Kind of bums me out. Kind of, you know, like I said, Jay Blaze, we had a really good run. I think the only really thing that bums me out is that we never got to do any sort of like goodbye goodbye episode. Uh, thank you for listening for so many years episode, like all, you know, dangle clacks that came from the culture of clouds podcast vodka pocket. I mean, we had so many great like jokes and inside jokes in that podcast bums me out, but you know, it's, uh, it's whatever. Like I said, we had a really great run. I'm very proud of everything we did with the culture of clouds podcast. And, uh, you know, obviously Ruby Rue is my, my, one of my nearest and dearest friends and I love her into the ground and I want nothing but good things and fruitful, you know, abundance, uh, for Ruby Rue. So, Hey, that's just what happened. And, uh, I appreciate the, uh, you know, I should, I appreciate you you listening to the culture of clouds podcast. There's hundreds of episodes of the culture of clouds podcast dating all the way back to shit forever ago. We recorded the first episode, I think at, in, in a Florida vape show or something like that. It, it, anyway, it was a really, really fun podcast. And, uh, who knows, who knows if culture of clouds will ever come back. Uh, Kevin yum. That's very gracious of you. Okay. Here's my Q and a any kids. If not, do you want a couple? 
Have you always lived in Cali? What kind of cars do you have? What's your biggest fear? Any siblings? What's your favorite YouTuber? Love you. Damn it, Kevin Yum. Kevin Yum out there in Boston thinks he can sneak in with a bunch of questions right out of the gate. Okay, uh, here's my Q&A. Any kids do you want? No. Never had an interest. Never had an interest. Never, ever, ever pictured myself ever having kids. There has been no time in my life really where I've been like, yeah, <laughs> let's... Let's just do that thing. Uh, I, I I don't. And, you know, it's for whatever personal reasons. I've just never been interested in it. You know, and I'm not like anti-kids. But it's cool. And I and I understand that that's like, you know, I, I understand that that's an important, uh, you know, fulfilling thing. And I love when people have kids and, you know, my, my friends have kids and that's great. And I get to hang out with my friends' kids. But for me personally... I wouldn't do this if I had kids. There's no way that I'd vlog and drink beer in the evening while my wife is working and then go hang out like on a Zoom chat with all of my patrons until all hours of the morning. Like it just wouldn't happen. There's certain things that I am, am selfish about and one of them is my free time. <laughs> um, also ask, have you, have you always lived in Cali? I have not always lived in California. I was born in California. Uh, I lived in California and then I lived in the Nevada side. Um, I grew up in Lake Tahoe, California. So if you look at California and Nevada where they meet right there in that little crook, there's a lake. There's a lake that straddles the border, Ah, it straddles the border and it's called Lake Tahoe and it's paradise. And I got to grow up there and I was born on the California side and I grew up, you know, in Lake Tahoe on the California side. And it's like, I grew up not even a mile from the border, you know? And so I had jobs in California while I lived in Nevada. And then a number of years later, I lived in California, but I worked in Nevada. And then I lived in California and worked in California. And then I moved back to Nevada because it's right there. So I lived back and forth between, you know, California and Nevada my whole life, but I was born in California and I've lived in Southern California since 2014. That was my big, uh, my big, whatever thing that happened, I quit my job and moved to California and started being a YouTuber. And that's how long I've been in Southern California. Now, what kind of cars you have? I have boring cars, dude. I'm not really like a car guy. I've had like my dream car. I've always said is like a, you know, like a late sixties model Mustang, like a Shelby, like the fastback black with the white racing stripes. Fuck off. That's a cool car. But otherwise, I'm not really super into cars. I drive a Toyota. You know, that's it. <laughs> it's a TC. It's a Scion. It's made by Toyota. It's boring. Uh, it's done. And, I, and that's it. And that's what I drive. Uh, my wife drives a Mini Cooper. And I try to drive her car more than I drive my car because Mini Coopers are fun as hell to drive around LA. Uh, what's your biggest fear? Jesus Christ. Uh, I don't even know. Um, some sort of uh, bear shark octopus that attacks me. I feel like that, that'd be fucking crazy, right? Um, no, I guess my biggest fear is, uh, uh, I, good Lord, I don't even know. I don't even know. Obviously, you know, you want, you, you wanna, you wanna be happy, you wanna be healthy. So, uh, you know, you get scared of disease, I guess, things like that, uh, dying, you know, fear of death, things like that. I guess my biggest, biggest, biggest fear is um bugs fuck bugs fuck them smash all bugs destroy all bugs except for bees fuck bugs all bugs die also deep water like deep water so that you can't see the ground so that you can't even see down i'm horrified of deep water there's a there's a subreddit that i go to regularly called thalassophobia that's just deep water triggering pictures and every single one of them makes me hate deep water you know it's like a photo of like a someone swimming with just deep water below them or like de diving really deep in like murky water nope deep water f that uh so i hope that answers your question kevin yum about my biggest fear um any siblings? I have a brother. I have my brother, Brian. Uh, he's three years my younger. So he's my younger brother, Brian. He still lives uh, back home up in Reno, Nevada. He's a, he's a working man. He's got his family. Uh, and uh, yeah, I have a brother. He's awesome. He's been vaping for... Seven years? 
seven years, eight years, nine years. He might be going on 10 years of vaping. My brother was actually uh, Stanton Glantz's worst enemy. He was a dual user for a real long time. For about a year, he would go back and forth. Like if he was at work and he was outside, he was smoking. If he was at home, he was vaping. And he just was like back and forth. Like sometimes I smoke, sometimes I vape, sometimes I smoke, sometimes I vape. And it took about a year before he was finally like, okay, I'm just going to vape full time. And then he's been combustion free combustion free for about a decade now. In fact, my brother and I were, uh, we were huge smokers. We used to take these trips to Las Vegas, right? And there's something about being in Vegas, man, you're sitting at a blackjack table with your little Manhattan, you know, your little bourbon and with, you know, whiskey, and you're just sipping and smoking a cigarette. You think you're Frank Sinatra and you just smoke cigarettes. And my brother and I smoked, smoked, hard. We would pregame, like we would, we would buy cartons, like tons of cigarettes and those like uh, camel special blends that came in the tins. We would stock up on these. So when we went to Las Vegas, we were never running out of cigarettes. We just smoked like crazy. And when I switched to vaping, he was the first person I thought of was like, you, you're, you're going to switch to vaping too. <laughs> you definitely, definitely are. So yeah, that's my, uh, that's my younger brother. Um, what, who is your favorite YouTuber? That's a, I have a few favorite YouTubers. I like uh, fresh baked Disney. I think they're, I think they're a great group of people. I like that guy, uh, David, what's his name? David from fresh baked. Love me some fresh baked Disney. I love, uh, obviously Phil DeFranco is where I get all of my news from. I love Phil DeFranco. He's, he's obviously a great YouTuber and a, uh, you know, a big inspiration to me when I started doing the, uh, 510 report back in, 2018, 2018, I think I was doing the 510 report pretty regularly, which was like the news show. And it was kind of, I was kind of trying to emulate like the Phil DeFranco show. He, he cuts his news in like a really cool way. And I thought I'm going to do that for vaping. And that's why I started the 510 report. If you put any of my 510 report videos right next to like a, a, a Phil DeFranco show, it's the fucking same. I did like the same jump cuts, the same, like, you know, Phil, he's just, I love him. He's a, he's a huge YouTuber and he's one of those guys. Like if I ever met Phil DeFranco, I, it's like, I, I wouldn't even know what to say. I would just go, thanks. Thanks, Phil. Thank you. Like there's so much I would love to unload on him. Just be like, you're my favorite. You're, you inspired me to be, a, you know, Phil DeFranco. Hands down, Phil DeFranco. Appreciate that, Kevin Yum. Uh, the wee baby Seamus. How are you doing, the wee baby Seamus? Um, we are going to get through all of the super chats tonight. We're already running long at 632. But I'm going to try to get to these all these super chats, you know, you guys. So don't try, you know, don't overload me. <laughs> um, my question is, this is a wee baby Seamus. Says, uh, I'm getting hot arcs from my Kennedy constant contact switch. It also makes a clicking sound. Is that normal or is the switch bad? Uh, are you opening more higher spots on your Patreon? Um, not anytime soon, but if someone drops off of the 10 or $20 tier, you can try to jump in there, the wee baby Seamus. I just cap my tiers. I cap my patrons. It's just something I do. And so if someone drops off, you can try to jump in. Look, and if you're watching it for like a month or so and nobody drops off, uh, hit me up again and I and I can try to make some space for you. I don't want to, you know, I'm not packing the Supreme Court. I'm not trying to, you know build out my Patreon to be like crazy amounts of people. I like, uh, I like, I like my group of people, uh, Shane. Uh, oh, oh, so sorry. Your hot arcs from your Kennedy. Clean your contacts, clean your contacts. Uh, sometimes the Kennedy switch gets a little bit weird. Um, the Kennedy switch has two, uh, places for it. It's got the short throw and the long throw. I don't know if you can switch, try to switch back and forth between those, but clean the contacts. It shouldn't be making a clicking sound. I've never had anything from Kennedy be other than, um, you know, anything other than amazing. So it, I feel like it shouldn't be making a clicking sound, but, uh, try to clean those contacts and fiddle around with the switch positioning. Shane says, also, can I buy your reload SRTA? I can't find one. No, Shane. Look, Shane, I'll give you a solid maybe right now. Okay. Let me spend some more time with it. I still really like it. I don't, you know, I'm not sure I want to part with it yet. Joey Sparks. That's very gracious of you. You know, as well, Justin, that's very gracious of you. Hey, that's all. 
Okay, figured New Wave Dave would have a question. Uh, I have a great question. Most of us want to know, uh, can we get more large yo-yo shirts and beer glasses at the merch booth? Yeah, New Wave Dave, of course you can. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I'm a... Uh, I'm just a one man operation, bro. And so anything that happens, it's like, I try to get uh, as much help as I can for my wife and God bless her. She tries her hardest and she helps me out more. I mean, I'm so thankful for my wife's help, but literally if there's new t-shirts that need to happen, it's my responsibility. If there's new beer glasses that need to happen, it's my responsibility. And I am bad with responsibility. Too much MXPX, I guess. But I'm just bad with responsibility. I'm bad with, like, it's hard to just, I need to create some new beer glass design. So it's like, okay, open Photoshop and just be creative. Just make something rad. And it's like, wow, all right, uh, you know, I'll try. And so it, these things just take time. But yes, we're going to get way more yo-yo stuff, way more beer glasses in the merch booth. Thank you, New Wave Dave, for pimping the merch booth. I appreciate that. Graham... Uh, Neferon had a really good question he posted way earlier in the chat today. Wow, look at Graham stepping up for Neferon. If you were to have never vaped but still ended up here on YouTube, what would you be making videos on? Replay Brew Crew. Fucking A. That's for you, Graham. Replay Brew Crew. Um, I don't know. <laughs> um. Before vaping, I did have a YouTube and I uploaded about 10 to 15 videos and I deleted them all and I left one video up. It's the first video. If you go back in my videos to the very beginning of Grim Green and I have Wayne Campbell, like long hair poking out of my snapback and I'm like, all right, I'm just the dudest of all dudes. Um, I used to make videos about uh, skepticism, which is kind of weird. And I realized that, but I was really into like skepticism and thinking critically. I went through this phase where, um, this, is a, this is a deep question there, Graham and Neferon. So thank you for that. Um, to answer your question, I guess I wouldn't be on YouTube with, I wouldn't, I just wouldn't without vaping, not no interest. But when I, f I first got a webcam and I first got on YouTube, all I did was talk about skepticism, uh, thinking critically and like atheism, you know, I had went from being a very devout, uh, spiritual person, you know, to being a very much less devout, less spiritual person. And so this change that I was going through, I started thinking about, you know, life and the universe and 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 the relevance of, of God and skepticism. And I was kind of in this weird place. And that's what I made videos about was being skeptical of outrageous claims. What we, what, you know, what James Randi calls woo woo things, woo woo stuff like homeopathy and, uh, you know, <laughs> people taking advantage of other people like uh, psychics that say that I can talk to your dead mother and here's what she's saying to you. Fuck those people. And so that's kind of the original tear that I was on was I was trying to, I was trying to make the world think a little bit more critically, I guess. And so I originally started on YouTube making skeptic videos, atheist skeptic videos. And you can go all the way back and see my video called why I'm an atheist. And it was, you know, I was 20, six or 27 in that video. It was, it was a lifetime ago. I don't even remember what I said in that video, but I feel like if I had continued on YouTube without vaping, that's what I'd be doing right now. I'd probably be talking about religion. I'd probably be talking about politics, you know, and skepticism as big of as an audience that there was for that. Um, Rhett Falls, tongue twister for fun. I'm really good at these Rhett Falls. A box, of, I'm just kidding. Uh, a box of biscuits, a box of mixed biscuits, a biscuit mixer, and a bis biscuit. A box of biscuits, a box of mixed biscuits, and a biscuit mixer. A box of biscuits, a box of mixed biscuits, and a biscuit mixer. A box of biscuits, a box of mixed biscuits, and a biscuit. <laughs> All right. That's a little bit of a tongue twister. A box of biscuits, a box of mixed biscuits, and a biscuit. The Human Torch was denied a bank loan. 
A box of biscuits, a mix. A <laughs> you got me, you fucker. A box of biscuits, a box of mixed biscuits, a biscuit mixer. Basically nailed it, Rhett. Uh, all right. Uh, weird. Is that your name? Oh, I went too far back. I'm sorry. I lost my space. Uh, Leardon. Is that you, Leardon? Can't wait to see you on the Misfits live stream on the 1st. It's going to be loads of fun. Yeah, I'm doing a live stream with the Vaping Misfits. They invited me to be on their big, like, 24-hour live stream or something. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be this weekend. In fact, my weekend is booked. I'm going to be uh, on with Breeze Tones and those Aussie guys on, uh, what's that, the, the, the Aussie Vape Show? And I'm going to be on the Vaping Misfits live stream this weekend. Should be fun times. Appreciate that. Southern Comfort. Uh... Have you ever wanted to be like SoCo and ride a Harley Davidson? SoCo, yes. I will say yes, absolutely. I, I'm fascinated by motorcycles, Harley Davidsons and motorcycles. It kind of started when I was working at Starbucks. Uh, when I was working at the Starbucks roasting plant, the entire I think I've told this story before, but the entire maintenance team um, who we worked very closely with as roasters, um, they all rode motorcycles. We, we had so many people that rode motorcycles and Harley Davidsons that we had motorcycle parking like all up at the front. It was like 10 spots of just motorcycle parking. And it was one of those things where like even people who didn't drive motorcycles would come to the roasting plant, see all the motorcycles and go, I want to ride a motorcycle too. And they'd buy motorcycles. And so we had tons, tons of motorcycles at, uh, at Starbucks and I kind of became fascinated with them. I've always been fascinated with motorcycles. Um, I don't know that I will ever ride uh, a motorcycle in LA. If I wasn't living in LA, if I was living literally anywhere else in the country, I would probably ride a motorcycle somewhere. But in LA, it's just not a good, you know, California has weird lane splitting laws that just feel super dangerous. But uh, yes, Southern Comfort, to answer your question, I do want to be like you. I would like to ride a Harley Davidson. I probably won't ever. But you know what? That's just not for me. There we go. Friday Vape Club, you on that whoop train. Is that a whoop on the right wrist? Okay, yes. Thank you for noticing Friday Vape Club. This is called a woot strap. And uh, my good buddy, you know my good buddy, Kent, Twisted Messes. Yeah, Kent Hill, Twisted Messes. Well, for my birthday, he got me a whoop strap. And uh, so I have one, and Eric Vinyl and Vapor has one, and Kent has one, and Beecher has one, and, and a few other people that I don't recognize have one. And we're all in this group on the whoop app to compare our daily caloric burn and things like this. Um, it's kind of cool. Like, I don't know. I don't even really notice it. You, I sleep with it on, you shower with it on. And what it's doing is it's constantly like taking biometric readings of your body and showing you how many calories you've consumed, how many calories you've burned, your recovery rate from working out to sleeping. It tracks your sleep, tells you how many times you woke up during the night. I think it's really great. And yes, that's a whoop strap. Uh, I'm on the whoop train. On the whoop train. Biometrics, you know? <laughs> I'm trying to live as long as I possibly can. Uh, Barbara Burgess. Okay, Barbara. Cousin Barbara's asking the big question. How did you and Pickles meet? And by Pickles, she means my wife, Casey Pickles. Um, we honestly, we, so we met through vaping, uh, Barbara. We met through vaping. There was, hang on, let me have some beer here. There was a time in 2010 where uh, I was doing my thing. I'm doing my Grim Green thing. I'm reviewing vape stuff and juices. And I'm like, ha ha, I'm Grim Green. And I'm reviewing stuff and I'm having fun. And there was a company named Pure Smoker. And Pure Smoker was a big supplier of vape stuff back in the day. They were like a modern sort of vapor DNA or element vape. You know, it's like if you're getting new liquids, if you're getting new atomizers, if you know, you're going to Pure Smoker, you're, you're going shopping at Pure Smoker. And so I would buy stuff from Pure Smoker. I would buy atomizers. I would buy liquids. When they started making their own mods, I would also, I also bought one of their mods. I bought a Prodigy V2 and a V3. And so Casey my future wife, current wife, she was fresh. She just moved uh, down to Tennessee and she answered an ad in a magazine and started working for a vape company. 
And that's how we met. I would, e- I'd have to email her because my, my stuff would break and I would send it back and she would fix it. And then sometimes like float me back like a couple extra bottles of liquid or something like that. You know, we kind of had this like little friendly, like maybe a little bit flirty, but it's whatever, sort of like, you know, whatever. It was just Casey Pickle and I had like, you know, a huge crush on her, right? Huge crush on her. And then so at the very first vape fest in uh, Fredericksburg, that's VA, um, we had been kind of whatever, chit-chatting online through Vapors Forum, through ECF and things like this, and just whatever, goofing off, talking about bands and music and, and whatever kind of random stuff we would talk about. And then she was at the very first Vape Fest because Pure Smoker was at the very first Vape Fest. I went to the very first Vape Fest with the help of a few people, Adam and uh, Scott and Jack from uh, Nick Quid. They flew me out there and I knew she was going to be there. And I was like, okay, I'm nervous to meet this girl. No, I, you know, I'm kind of have a little bit of a crush on her. Um, she, she, we, we met, she ran at me, tackled me. Uh, it was just tackle hug situation. Um, we, we hit it off right away. We were kind of like instant friends with a little bit of like, maybe a little bit of like tongue in cheek kind of flirting happening, but we hung out and we, we talked for, for hours and hours and we kind of just became friends, you know? Um, and then, uh, whatever, I'm going to skip over about a decade and now we're married. And so that's how we met back in, back in 2010. And, you know, uh, it's been, uh, it's been a long and winding and interesting road. And, uh, I, I could not, uh, I could not, I could not be happier. My wife, uh, is rad. I mean, she's rad in the truest rad sense of the term. She's just pure, pure radness, Barbara, pure radness. Okay. We got, we got some more from Joey here. Uh, comment didn't send before. I'm a bit drunk. Hey, that's okay. Joey, me, me too. Loving the vlog six month cigarette free. And you've helped that signed up for the Patreon. Also favorite YouTuber. Oh, Joey. Thank you. <sighs> that's awesome, man. Thank you. Six month cigarette free. Joey. Awesome. Cheers. Have a fist bump. Yeah, Joey. Six months. And bro, before you know it, that six months, it just turns into six years and it just, it you know, it just flies by. It just flies by. Anyway, appreciate that, Joey. Uh, what do we got from Nephron? Answer any question Graham per dunkit per cant has. All right, Graham, what did you ask me? I'm not telling you the size of my, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, I didn't see anything. Uh, appreciate that though. Uh, Nephron <laughs> Grim, uh, Scott Runyon asks, uh, Grim, have you ever caught the YouTube channel modern day debates? We need to start a campaign and let them have a vaping debate. Mel Michelle Minton versus any ants. Yo, yo, holy crap. Scott Runyon. Yes. I have not heard of mon- modern day debates, but I would put Michelle Minton against anybody. Michelle Mitten is brilliant. She's just smart. She's such a good writer. She's one of my personal heroes. Michelle Mitten is, I would put her up against any anti-vapor any day of the week. Email them, email modern day debates, Scott Runyon, see what you can get going. Uh, delirium in here. It says, uh, your biggest fear is corks. That's right. My biggest fear is corks. Respect the grim lore. <laughs> Oh shit. I didn't realize, <laughs> I didn't realize there was a grim lore. I do have a little bit of a mythos, don't I? My biggest fear uh, is corks. Thanks for being my mom. Didn't mean to creep you out with my joke. I'll be better. <laughs> I'll be better soon. I appreciate that delirium. I appreciate that. And yeah, my biggest for- fear for a really long time was corks, like uncorking beer bottles. Nah, not for me. Not for me. Not for me. Also, thanks. Okay, that's right. Um, okay, we got one more here from, uh, yeah, see, I knew we would run long. I knew we would run long. And we didn't get to do a retro vape. We didn't get to do a liquid tasting. Don't worry. All of those will be back next week. We're going to go for another 10 minutes if anybody else has any other questions. This is literally your chance. Ask me anything. It's called an AMA. Anything. Uh, Sexy King Phil says, sorry I'm late. Not not okay. Sexy King Phil, 
let me explain something to you. <laughs> let me explain something to you, Sexy King Phil. You are a Yo Yo Patreon. And so, as a Yo Yo Cool Kid Club member, there's a certain level, you know, of dedication that is expected. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Phil. I love you, bro. You, you can be late whenever you want. No questions asked. I won't even write you up. I won't even put you on a first level notification. Uh, sexy King Phil. Um, so uh, if, literally, anybody else has any other questions? Otherwise, we're going to start wrapping this up. Uh, you do be in the chat says, Grim Green, do you remember Bombay Vapes? The ones that had the famous lobster vape juice. And do you still hear from them? Holy crap, I have not thought about Bombay Vapes in a very, very long time. They did have a lobster liquid. They had a few liquids. And holy crap, Bombay Vapes. So here's my story with Bombay Vapes. Their liquids weren't very good, but they were so nice. They were just the nicest people. Him and his wife, I can't even remember their names, but they were the nicest people. And I remember at a vape bash in Chicago one time, um, someone stole their money. Someone stole a bunch of their money. And so we had like a money gathering thing for Bombay Vapes because they lost all of the money that they had made over the weekend at vape bash. And, uh, everyone like pitched in a couple bucks and got bam, you know, made Bombay vapes, you know, mostly whole, but that's my only, uh, memory of Bombay vapes. That's my only memory of Bombay vapes. Other than it was a husband and wife and his wife was always, you know, really like crazy energetic, like crazy energetic. I just remember her being like, just bouncing off the ceiling, like vaping, you know, crazy energetic, Bombay vapes. Wow. Dang. That is old school. That is old school, bro. That is old school. Um, Lee, not the real Gerard Butler, the legend. It's no big deal. Uh, how and where did you propose to Casey? Oh, that's a really good question, Lee. Um, I, there's actually a video of it and it's, uh, look, Casey and I have never done anything traditionally ever. We just, we're not that couple. So when I was thinking about how I wanted to propose to Casey, I knew that it couldn't be just like a traditional, let's go to some place we love and I'll propose to you, or let's go to the ocean and I'll propose to you and I'll get down on one knee and propose to you. So I, so <laughs> this is so dumb. It's so dorky. And I have a video of it. Maybe I'll share next week. I don't know. Maybe I won't share it. Maybe I'll share it with the patrons. Um, but so it was in 2017, we were living in San Diego and I was editing a vlog back when I did pre shot vlogs. And one thing that I was always asked Casey to do is Casey is a really good sounding board. She's a really good, like gut check person. I have her, uh, you know, apart from she's better at writing than me. She's better at math than me. I have her like proofread tweets for me all the time. Like, is this, oh, is this okay? Should I tweet this? How's the spelling? How's the grammar? Like, will you help me with this tweet? And she'll help me with tweets. She'll help me with Facebook posts. She'll proofread stuff for me for the Patreon. She proofreads stuff for me all the time. And so it's not unusual for me when I'm editing a video to call her in and be like, Hey, pickle, will you come watch this part for me? Will you see if this joke is funny? Will you see if this makes sense? Will you see if what I said here is, you know, does this make sense at all? And so I would call her in all the time be like, will you just sit and watch this part of the video and tell me what you think? Like, tell me if it's funny or anything. So I thought, well, this is how it's going to happen. This is how I'm going to propose to her. So what I did is I pre-recorded my proposal on video with no jump cuts or anything. I just pre-recorded my proposal. And then when I was editing the vlog, I sneakily stuck my proposal into the middle of the vlog, right? into the middle of the vlog. And I was like, pick and she, you know, it's the day before Thanksgiving. She's running around. She's going crazy, going to the grocery store. You know, she just got back from a walk with Nico. And I said, pick, can you come in here and watch this part of the vlog and tell me if it's funny or not? And so she's like, oh, okay. And so what I did is this is so fucking meta is I set up another camera in the corner of my office secretly recording. 
So I have a video of me calling Casey into my office and us just whatever, chit chatting and she sits down and I'm like, here, will you just watch this and make sure it's funny? And so I press play and she's just sitting watching it. And it's just a vlog, you know, it's just normal vlog. And I'm talking about, oh, this liquid, it's a little bit too sweet for me. And then it cuts and it's me proposing to her and she's just watching it. And she looks at me and then she's just watching it. And meanwhile, I'm filming all of this from across the room. So I'm filming her watching my pre-filmed proposal in a vlog video that I'm asking her to like, look at for me. It's so bizarre. It's so bizarre. It's so bizarre, but it was great. And, uh, she said yes. And we had a great little moment there. And, uh, I got it all on video. I got the whole proposal on video and it was, the, it was one of the coolest things I've ever done. One of the coolest things I've ever done. I might share that video maybe at some point with, uh, with all of you, with all of you patrons, Lee, I might do that, <laughs> but that's the Casey proposal story. Um, Appreciate that, Lee. That gave me a little bit of feels. I want to go hug my wife now. SVK Vapes, have you, if you have the time, would you ever write a sci-fi novel? Also, I'm that other Florida guy. Yeah, I got two Florida guys. I got, uh, I got no, besides, besides Matt Gates, it's, it's Southern Comfort and it's SVK Vapes. Um, I'm a bad writer, uh, SVK Vapes, just a bad writer. I don't, I don't write well. Uh, this is why I ask my wife to pre-read tweets for me because my punctuation and grammar is is bad and I type like I speak. So it's very casual and like, I don't think I could write a sci-fi novel. I don't think I could. I don't know that I'm creative enough to write a sci-fi novel. It would be fun. Like I would like to give it a try. Well, shit, SVK, I'm kind of a little bit turned around on the subject now. I kind of want to write a novel. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, SBK vapes. I, I, I appreciate that. Maybe someday you want to write a novel SBK. You want to do it together. That could be a damn thing. Uh, red gorilla has a question and said, how's the bass playing coming slow. It's slow going. You know, I try to have other interests outside of this YouTube and outside of this outside of vaping, but it's, um, it's difficult. <laughs> It's truly and honestly difficult. I don't get a lot of time to myself to practice. You know, I, I, I was practicing guitar like I was learning guitar, guitar, like six string guitar. Um, I, I've been replaying my bass a lot in 20, like 18 and 19 when I was living in LA and Hollywood proper area, I was playing my bass a lot more, but it's one of those things where, you know, on a, on a Tuesday, I'll get done with work at 10 PM and then make dinner and then just go to bed. And it's like, oh, I didn't do anything today. <laughs> I didn't do anything today, but fucking work. So it's coming along. It's coming along slow, but it's still coming along. We still, I still kind of joke around with my buddy Jim about starting up something new, you know, starting up a new band, possibly Scare Horse 2.0, you know. So that could be a thing, Red Gorilla. I appreciate that. Uh, Sexy King Phil asks, Grim. I has question. Okay. What are your thoughts on the alternative music of the nineties? Like Marcy playground and three eleven. Um, the nineties was, and forever will be firmly cemented as the best decade of rock music that has ever existed ever. And you can disagree with me and that's fine, but you're wrong because the nineties was rock music. Just, just on a pedestal. I love rock music of the nineties. I mean, I don't like, I'm fine with 311. I don't go crazy for 311, but I like 311. And I know, I know some people Lee that really like 311 Macy, Pl Marcy playground never really got into them. But like, if you're talking about shit like candle box or, uh, the gin blossoms or collective soul or any of the rock grunge alternative that came out in the nineties, you're, you're instantly talking about the best music that has graced God's green earth. The nineties was rock music, just perfected, perfected. You hear boomers talking about Led Zeppelin. Soundgarden. Nirvana, Queen, you know, uh, uh, I, was gonna, I almost said Queens of the Stone Age, but yeah, fucking throw Queens of the Stone Age in there. 
The 90s was music perfected. Rock music perfected. Sexy King Phil. All right, here we go. Let's wrap this up with one last question. I appreciate you guys coming to hang out. I was trying to get some questions out of the chat as well, but it kind of just didn't happen. Um, Sexy King, uh, Graham. Graham says, uh, you're stuck on an island. You got three setups. Go. This is the easiest question I've ever had to answer. Mix K-Fun. No questions asked. Billet box. No shit. Maybe this is harder than I thought. K-Fun mix. No questions asked. Some sort of mech. Some sort of RDA. No questions asked. Could be the snow cap Asgard. Uh, could be the clutch recoil. Some sort of mech for cloud chasing. And then I guess some sort of AIO, right? I guess the dot, I guess the dot mod, I guess the billet box, the billet box with some sort of restricted lung in it. So I can have mouth to lung, restricted lung, cloud chasing. All I need is 18 650s. I guess this needs a 21 700, but I think that would be my three desert island setups. Now, if you're going to ask me about juice, I'll say own boys mango. I'll say banana cream beauty. And I'll say pony on mother trucking acid. Those are the three liquids I would take with me to a desert island. But uh, yeah, sick. All right. Well, hell. Sublime, 311 is straight sublime. Listen, you do you. More 311 for you. I, I, I'm, I'm fine with 311. I don't want to say anything that's going to make a Lee drop off of my Patreon. Uh, Peridot, Peridot Vapes, how are you doing? Um, he says, your package was returned undeliverable. Kindly re-verify your address on my email so I can overnight the package in the morning. Dang, all right, I will. I apologize, that's weird. Undeliverable, all right, I'll get you another address. I'll get you another address. Anyway, um, I guess that's it, you guys. I guess that's it. Let me make sure I didn't forget anything. No, look, 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 there's hoodies. There's uh, I I got I got Girl Scout cookies. Are you kidding me? I have I have jammy Dodgers. I have Jaffa cakes. I have I have British candy. This has been a really great vlog, you guys. We didn't get to do a random liquid tasting or retro vaping. Do not worry because this is not ever going to be the last vlog I ever do. We'll be right back here next Thursday with another beer and some more mail and a retro vape and a liquid tasting and getting to know Grim Green and all the things. So Soundgarden, Stone Temple Pilots, Temple of the Dog, Pantera, yeah, uh, Sepultura, Tool, too many awesome bands. The 90s was rock music perfected. And, and I stand by that. Uh, I stand by that statement like like you can't imagine. Firmly stand by that statement. Dude, I love Clutch. I love the company band. Don't don't talk about the company band. I like the company band. They wrote a song about Reno, Nevada. How do I not love the company band? Anyway, you guys, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. Um, let me take a quick look and make sure I didn't forget anything, okay? Let me just... I feel like we're doing great, and I have so many great snacks. Thank you, Ad Sloan. I mean, damn it. Just damn it. Thank you, everybody, for all of the love. Uh, I, 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 would be, I would be literally nothing. I would be literally nothing without you guys, but you guys have given me a home. You've given me a community. I mean, you've given me so much and uh, I only hope that I can return the favor uh, as frequently and, and as oftenly as possible. So here's where we're going to take uh, take our leave of each other, you guys. But uh, I don't even know what to say. Thank you. Um, I, I love Friday. I love Thursdays. I love vlog day. I love that you guys love vlog day. And there's not another time in the week that I look forward to more then every Thursday night getting to hang out with all of your beautiful smiling faces. Beautiful smiling faces. So uh, that's it. We're done. Um, I Again, I appreciate you guys. Uh, remember that no matter what anybody tells you, trust no one. <laughs> no matter what anybody tells you, vaping 
is an order of magnitude less harmful for you than burning and inhaling deadly, deadly carcinogen filled combustible tobacco cigarettes order of magnitude better for you. If you're a smoker, just switch right, or right away without hesitation, without hesitation. Um, we're going to keep fighting the good fight, you guys. I'm glad you had fun. I had a hell of a lot of fun tonight. Um, I'm going to be here with my billet box, but uh, thank you guys. Seriously, so much for watching. Remember that uh, no matter what anybody tells you, vaping's way better than smoking. Be excellent to each other. I'll see you guys here next week. Peace and chicken grease.